Welcome to Self Perfected. Nice. All right. Hey, everybody. So we were so having happy. a very interesting discussion, or starting to anyways, and I was like, well, let's just start recording and then I'll explain because it's all relevant stuff. Because uh, I was thinking, right, right, Jake, we want to talk about like AI and yeah, yeah. There's so much, there's so much stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, I, we were we were already talking about like, um, well, I'm always talking about the pure orientation stuff. <laughs> Christina and I found a video of us announcing our engagement and everything, and I was talking about pure orientation. Then we're like, oh shit, I've been just on this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> hey what was the context there what do you mean uh just like because you know i was telling you about uh that that book that i was reading yeah um and it, it talks heavily about peer orientation and just all the different stages of it and everything and we were talking about just before this about um how that looks in the digital era right and you know even back then they were just talking about with social media and facebook and all of that and how kids are, it, it's ripping. So kids. you're talking about the book, Hold On To Your Kids, specifically? Yes, yeah, yeah, specifically that book, right. They didn't even know about TikTok yet. They, no, TikTok like, was not a there thing. There was no TikTok, yeah. So so it was before TikTok, Snapchat, all this shit that is out now, and way before AI, right? So like, and, and the things that they were talking about then, uh, about uh, technology then was just like, this is, we need to slow down in, in regards to the effect that it's having on our society, the effect that it's having on our children, we need to slow down. This is going way too fast. We have not caught up to it. That was back then they were talking about this. When was that book written? So uh, originally that book was written in 2005. And then they made a, a newer edition where they just added some things about um, the digital aspects of social media in 2014, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, Th that's the latest edition of it. That they were talking about that stuff today it is just like whoa okay we are so next level with all that still our society has not caught up to the technology most people are unaware of what ai can do today and one of the things that i was discussing with christine this morning because i thought it was just pretty profound actually is they talk about this ritual of collecting right and and the ritual is, is basically um you'll notice just in general, it's it's really easy for a parent to go to their child when they're an infant and get really close to their face and try to make that child smile, mm -hmm. right? And this is just like a basic overview. I'm not going to go into the details, but but don't don't try to get that child to smile. Even a toddler, like you naturally want to get that to toddler to smile, but at some age, it becomes kind of weird to get in a kid's face. <laughs> like if I were just just to get into your face. Like, it'd be kind of weird to be like, what the fuck are you doing, right? But, but it, it conveys intimacy, right? And, and there's still a, a value to it as you get older. You just have to do it in a little bit different way, but it's completely lost when it comes to social media. And, and the value, what I mean as when you get older is you wouldn't, with your partner, with your, your spouse, you wouldn't just automatically just start having sex with them. Right. There, there, there is a buildup to it. There's a, a, a there's an intimacy that you are connecting with them beforehand. And you're like, you, you kind of get close to them. You, you get them to smile. You get them to like they're they're in agreement with you. And then you start the intimate act of having sex. Right. Well, in the same way um, with children, what's, what's happening is there is none of that collecting, quote unquote, ritual. And especially when they get onto social media. It's just cold. It, it's like going into it cold where they are then broadcasting themselves, presenting themselves. There's nobody else presenting themselves in, in, on a one-on-one -on -one sort of situation like that, where it's like, hey, I, in, in sex, you present yourself, your, your partner presents themselves, right? Well, um, it's like even like, um, like if you go meet up with a friend or something, you like say, hey, how's it going? You shake hands, hug, like whatever you do. Like there's some kind of initiation point before right. you then you don't just like generally sit down and like immediately you're in a conversation or something you know you might talk about the weather or I don't know like there's things that you do to like go into it right right you know? 
Um, but it, 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 basically the point being made specifically as uh, with the digital aspect is that there is none of that intimacy. You're doing it to connect. You want to connect, but yet at the same time, you can't possibly connect. It doesn't fulfill the actual connection need that you have as a human being. And so it, it's this constant like dopamine hit, but it doesn't actually fulfill the part that you want fulfilled. And so that creates the addiction because you're getting, it's like you're getting close, but it's not what you actually want fulfilled. And so, yeah, I was just bringing that up because um, we were talking about that beforehand, but it was also funny because Christine and I were watching a video of us talking like two, three years ago or something like that. And, and we were also talking about that. I was talking about that. She's like, you've been talking about this shit for a long time. Um, but I, I just saw the relevance with where we're at today in society. Was, what, what were you saying that it was like when you guys got engaged? Yeah, it was when we got engaged, like after we got engaged, then we made a video talking about our engagement. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. thought it was like, cause I was there when you guys got engaged. <laughs> you're like, I, I don't gonna, remember you talking you're like, about You like got up on the bridge and you're like, hey guys, just want to announce we just got engaged and I'd like to take this moment to talk about uh, uh, peer, oh, what was the word? <laughs> peer orientation. <laughs> peer orientation, okay. It's a really important topic. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, now I that I have remember. all your attention. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and with with those books, right? I haven't read Hold On to Your Kids, but um that whole idea of like you us needing to slow things down is just is just not going to happen. You know, it's it's like kind of the whole like conservative thing like come on guys just, you know, slow down. It's like, no, we just need to level the fuck up. That's yeah, what that's, self-perfected yeah, is. Yeah. 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 I was I was watching yesterday uh, this um, this interview with that guy Connor Leahy, I think is his name. He's one of these AI. He, he yeah. runs a company that's like trying to trying. To, he's working on AI alignment, like aligning it with human values, et cetera, whatever. So I, I, we've talked. To, we've I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast, but we've talked about it before. Anyways, um, and uh, it, the reason I brought it up is because he was like, you know, it's like again saying we need to slow this down but it's like there's no that's definitely not going to happen like oh oh that that's what it was he was like talking to i think he was it was mentioning like jack or someone like that from twitter or one of these people and he's like you know i would talk to them every once in a while and like i would you know we would talk he's like i like these people they're nice people and so forth you know but anytime i would bring up like hey that stuff you're doing with the ai or the machine learning or whatever like there's you know we really need to stop and like and s slow down and everything and they would be like oh well yeah but you know like we need to consider you know and they would basically just make it like they would be so concerned about so many things in the world but then that particular point they would make it all these excuses as to why you can't you shouldn't do that yeah. right even to the point where there was i was somebody was talking about like open ai is like one of their arguments for why they release stuff is like you have they have to release it to make it safe you know and all this stuff and the guy was just like it's insane right it's, but yeah. we can sit here and complain it's not stopping you know because we have a we, in our, our, our collectively where we're at we all are working within self-interest and so like these companies are like, like okay i'll stop but what about everybody else like no like they would you say like they want the glory they want you know, right. the be to the first to make all the money, whatever, right? So it's not stopping. Yeah. And no one, it, it's interesting because it shows even more what we have been talking about this whole time is like, we're not all equally educated, all equally aligned in principle to where we can all be like, oh yeah, hey guys, this makes sense. Like right. it just makes sense to everybody to like stop doing something. Like um, in my family, if something occurs, and, and like, let's say there's a conflict, we can all be like, hey, let's all just stop. And then everyone's like, okay, yeah. I mean, sometimes there's emotion involved and you have to like, it might take a moment. Yeah, right. Generally speaking, it's like, okay, stop for a moment. Okay, let's just let it go. And then it doesn't, you know, so be, why can't we do that as a society? Because we don't have all the same vocabulary. Right. You know, when they talk about aligning it to values, aligning AI to human values, like, well, what, which ones? Yeah, we don't all have the same values. Are Chinese values the same as Indian values, the same as 
you know, French values, same as American, British, like, aren't they all kind of different? And what's the common core ones, you know, like, are there common core? core Am I advocating common core? Common core? (laughs) Is that why this came out? Oh, shit. But like, dude, even in the United States, there is no common values. Like there's people who are like, you know, on the, we kind of divide it into right and left, but that's just easy categories to like, kind of look at it, although that they're not clearly defined, but there, there's, there's really no alignment there. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you brought up common core. Cause I was just thinking about that. It's like, um, okay. We don't have a common core. We, what we have is a, a similar, you know what it's like, you know what I was just looking up the other day? Um, tension tables. Have you ever seen those? Not like, sure. Okay. So there are these tables that, no, wait, no, wait. It's not called tension table. It's called tensegrity or oh, ten, yeah, yeah. Is, oh. is that is that right? Tensegrity? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Tensegrity tables. Okay. And, and they're basically, they're tables that they're being held together by the tension of I don't know, chains or ropes or whatever, right? And it, it's very interesting, very interesting. But there's no common core for that table. Like it, basically what it looks like is if you were to have just a general coffee table, you might have four legs to that table that are very sturdy, or you might have a pole in the center that goes down and you know has a base to it. And, and that's the common core there. But with one of these tensegrity tables, it's like you cut one of these ropes and the whole table falls apart, right? Can you guys and so, see it? Yeah, yeah. So, so basically something like that. So it's like, it's how basically is that like floating table. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How is it staying up? That's basically what our society is. That's basically what our society is. It's just a bunch of tension on all these different sides that somehow is allowing for this table to stand at the moment, right? And then if you want to start cutting things back, but you want society to still stand, you got to find some common core apparently, right? But then it means you have to start culling some of these cords and determining which cords are important and which one's not so important. The whole thing's going to topple over, but it was just making me think of like imagery like that, yeah. Did y'all see that? uh, Did y'all watch that video I sent um, about, it was the healthy gamer guy Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Purpose. I've been through the whole thing. I did. Okay, that was a really good one. Um, Yeah. And I'm trying to think what was the point I wanted to make about it, but it was interesting because it's like he was talking about how, like, people's purpose. Like right now, there's there's a huge problem because people have a lack of purpose. I mean, obviously, something we've been talking about. Yeah, But the way he laid it out, it was really interesting because he was explaining how, like, for example, if you grow up like as an Indian, yeah, as know, an Asian. like, like yeah. Asian, I know they say Asian, but yeah, I guess, I guess it kind of applies whether you're Indian or like Chinese, Vietnamese, whatever. South Asian. Same, similar, still a similar, uh, what's the word, like ethic or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, they want their kids to be doctors or whatever, generally. Right. So they good grades, you become a doctor and like, that's their whole purpose. So it's kind of given to the child of like, this is your purpose. It's very clear. So they kind of just never pause for a moment to think about what's my purpose. They just have that purpose. Um, Now imagine somebody who grew up, they just went to high school. They didn't really achieve very much. Um, Their parents were not really involved with their life. Like kind of just like, yeah, whatever, like, gave them what they wanted. So they had a comfortable life, like middle class, but never really like the parents were more focused on doing their own things and just kind of suggesting, Hey, you should get good grades or whatever. But it wasn't like a very, like you think about the Indian or the Asian focus of like, did you do your homework today? Okay. Well, can you do some more homework? It's like constant, you know what I mean? So this is more of like a, you know, there's not really like that strict disciplined point. And so you imagine a child like that growing up and then they're just on the internet and then they're just on apps and stuff like there is no purpose given to them whatsoever. And I'm not justifying the other purpose, but my point is like um, he was talking about how. Uh, w- was that the one where he's also talking about, like when you're on the apps and stuff and it's like you never have that moment of. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, on yeah. there. Maybe you yeah. can explain that a little bit. So he was talking about basically how 
you're um, constantly getting stimulated from external stimuli, right? And because of this constant external stimuli, uh, you never have a moment actually to, because what he was making, the point that he was making was with the parents, the Asian parents giving their kids purpose and the other parents not giving their kids purpose. He's like, well, these, some people, they grow up and they're like, ah, you know, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I, um, I'll, I'll just kind of go with the flow. And then other people grow up and they've got this like Sigma grind set where they're like constantly just like, I'm going to, I'm going to grind hard. I got this side hustle. I'm going to have a side hustle on my side hustle. I'm going to retire early so I can go ahead and enjoy life already. But then they get to retirement and it's like, okay, they enjoy their life for a couple of years. And then they want to come out of retirement and they're like, I don't know what the fuck to do with my life. Because or like they're on that path and they haven't even considered what does it mean to be retired? Right. So they're just focused on like their purpose is just, I got to make enough money and get secure and retire. And right. it's like, they haven't even considered like, what do they want to do with their life? Like when, even at that point, like what's the point of it? Right. right. So that purpose is very like, it's kind of like that sensegrity thing. It's like very precarious, right? It's like, if anything right. snaps, like it's not going to work out. And, and, and so he's making the point of just like, you know, financial security is not a purpose. It's, it's like, like, okay, sure. You should have financial security, but it's not a purpose in itself. Right. But then imagine if everyone or a lot of people are focusing on that and it's like, I'll make money. However, you could see how that is reflected out in the system of like, that's the same thing as like these AI companies going like, we just need to build this AI and like get it out there and make money. They're not even considering for what reason, like, are you actually considering the impact on the world around you, on yourself, on everybody, like what's the purpose of doing this is um, like that, that, that Colin Leahy or Connor Leahy or whatever his name is, that guy, he was saying how with their company, they develop these, these, they work with these um, large language models, but for the purpose of being able to study them and understand like how they're forming on the inside, they're not doing it to develop the more advanced one to push it out they're more doing it so it's like it's an object of study of understanding mm. and that's not how the ai are being developed right now they're being developed to create commercial products to get to the next thing to make the new kinds of apps and all this stuff and not considering the effects right right and and they're they have no idea how they're developing on the inside they're like oh it, was, it just figured itself out i don't i don't know but we're glad that it works you know um, I'm, I'm, well, I'm trying to think that... what was that point i oh go ahead mitch well, that's like, that just reminds me of like, when you start looking at destiny, it's like you're studying it to understand the inner workings of yourself. Because so often, I mean, literally everything else in the world is all just designed for that. Hey, I just need to get the money. Or I just need to survive or whatever. But it's like, no, hang on, hang on. Let's pause for a moment. And let's look at like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. It's like, I've just, I've really been going in lately on seeing how like, there's like levels, right? You hit like certain level of like, oh, cool. Like I understand there's a process you got to do. You know, I should do self-forgiveness every day and just being disciplined in that. And then you start realizing, oh shit, our purpose is actually, we got to educate the world. Okay, cool. And then you start doing that and you have some success. But then you hit the next level and the next level. And at each point, it's funny. It's like we underestimate how much separation that we're really in that we're still accepting and allowing like how much you're being like who you really are is channeled into these different personalities and characters. And as you can really be self-honest about that, but also you got it like you could do, you could be self-honest, but then that also means you got to go actually study the material and man, shit is wild. Cause it's like everything I'm hearing now earlier, we were talking about the inconvenient truth, that Al Gore thing. And then we're talking about the peer orientation, all this stuff is like, it's all this outward manifestation of what's going on inside ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as you get the clarity on the inside, kind of like this, these AI guys are doing now, apparently, and you can understand how it works. It's like, okay, that's, that's some good steps forward in terms of actually creating this alignment. Because if you don't know what's going on on the inside, good fucking luck. It, it's, it, it cannot change. When you yeah. get to look inside, it's like, okay, now you have some ground to run on. And then we can look at too, if like, there's not any slowing down of this AI. I mean, maybe down the road, we could all work together and realize, okay, this is a pace that makes sense. But for right now, it's like, we got to level the fuck up. Yeah. The focus, if the focus is on trying to slow it down, you just like, I, I, you know. 
I think I know why you, you were bringing up the, the, I guess the psychologist guy. Well, hold on, before you bring that up, I, I was going to say some that Mitch, I just realized when Mitch was saying that it's like this whole point about trying to align the AI with human values and so forth. Like humans aren't even aligned with human values. Right. Yeah. yeah. You really look at it like humans aren't even because who's creating the AI? So yes. is the problem aligning the AI? Well, but the people creating it aren't even considering, but now you think you can get the AI to consider it. Right. That's why it's like, right. okay, don't focus on the AI slowing down, focus on educating yeah, as many people as possible properly. Right. Little but does Connor let the... he know, little does Connor let he know yet yeah, is he needs to just be a distributor. <laughs> <That's people. laughs> there you go. Somebody reach out to him. <laughs> I'll, I'll DM him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, hey man, slow down. <laughs> He'll be like, oh, he's talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the the point that was like one of the bigger points being made in that um that that psychology that video that you said. Um, he was basically saying how we've become numb to just who we are inside. And we're like constantly looking at, uh, you know, social media influencers or whatever. And like, oh, that's the life that I got to live. And then you try that thing on and it doesn't, it, it has no effect for you. You're like, you still don't feel fulfilled because you don't even know who you are really. Oh, but what was that point about the numbness that was really cool? Uh, the He was making the analogy of like, your tongue is numb and you're like trying out different foods, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, you see somebody eating some ice cream and yeah. you're like, oh, let me try that. And you give it some licks, but your tongue is numb. So you can't taste it. And you're like, ah, I don't get it. And yeah. then you try something else, but it's like your tongue is numb. And he, what he was saying was that the way in which social media is developing and we're interacting with it constantly, it's like, we are numb to what's actually going on inside of us. So we don't have any, we're not connected to the, our, our inner who am I? And like, there's no purpose coming from within. So it's like, we're numb to that, to that point within us. That's like, he doesn't say like this. I'm just trying to also interpret, you know, give our point on it, but it's like, there's a, who you are inside that actually is aligned with doing what's best for all, but you've lost connection with that, you yeah. know? And so now it's like, we're so outwardly focused of like, okay, what personality do, should I take on? What, what purpose, what thing should I, should I adopt as who I am, my identity? But it never works because it just feels artificial because it's not really coming from within you as connecting with who you really are. So it's like, again, you're trying to taste the ice cream and you're like, and then think about it, even the Instagram influencer you see licking the ice cream or, you know, with the body and the the, the pool over the cliff, you know, or whatever the thing you're seeing, like you actually look at the reality of it and like they, they rented it or they was their friend's place or, you know, like, and then right. it's all edited. And it's like, it's not, if you were to actually go, I saw this really cool thing. Um, it was, I don't remember where I saw it, but it was like this thing about like Instagram reality versus like the, the Instagram version versus the reality one. And it was like different clips. And it was, one of them was like this girl, or this woman like walking on these stones in this like wet area, like kind of like a, a, a nature, like, I don't know. I imagine it was like, it was like a, the hot spring looking thing, right? Something like that, you know, like this real picturesque thing. But then it showed like the reality and it's like all these people like milling about, like stepping on the stones. It's like tourists, you know? And then another one where it's like the beautiful girl, like in this like pool and it's like the filtering is really great. And she's like overlooking this cliff, like it's in the LA Hills or I don't know, whatever. And, uh, and then the reality, and it's just like a bunch of people like in a pool, like the same exact place, but they're just like all, you know, talking in the pool, like hitting the beach ball or whatever. And like, you're like, oh, that just looks normal versus this <laughs> cinematic version. Yeah. But like the only reality of it is like, imagine, okay. Imagine the, the version with the beautiful woman. Okay. And you're the beautiful woman and you're in the pool and you're like, you know, doing this you're not seeing yourself do it. You're not watching the video. You're actually in the body experiencing it. Right. There's, there are two different things. There's the reality of it. Then there's the video of it that mm. is obviously edited, filtered, all that stuff. They're not the same. So you, tr if you were to try that on and you actually become that. So, but what happens now? People aren't trying to become that. They're trying to become the video, the, the video, like they're not even trying to, to experience the video. They're just trying to make those videos. Right. Like, yes. Oh, I can make that. I can do that. Right. 
that's why a lot of times, like you'll see on my social media, I don't try to over like there's times where it's like a beautiful pick setting and I'll and I'll try I'll put never, like a filter or something, but generally it's like Kim, I've I'm just never seen your cleavage on a video at all. You know, I'm just like and I'm waiting I've never for seen it. you in a swimsuit walking into a pool. I've never seen you in a bikini at all. And you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, look at that engagement. See God, how, how many likes did we get right there? But it's like, I'm, I'm more, I'm not saying I'm some like, I'm like putting a lot of focus on it, but I'm more just trying to show the reality of the situation. Not like make it look a certain way, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. You know, sure. um, there's times where it's like, you know, you could do something fun like that. And that, that's cool too. But um, uh, what, what was the point there? It was just like, oh, okay. So, so there's some things I do want to share with you guys. I kind of started before we started recording, and then I was like, let me just save it. But I'll kind of segue into it. In my head, and it's going to get into all the AI, and we can talk about all that stuff too. Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 like the past week, I've been doing a lot of like, you know, because we have the event coming up, um, the self perfected event coming up pretty soon. So I've been less than two weeks. Yeah, less than two weeks. So when I have time at our property, I'm like doing things that need to be done before we go. Like, like I spent like four or five hours just mowing yesterday, which was cool. I'd never really done that. Like really mowed everything. I mowed the trails and everything. Cause they have to kind of be kept back or whatever. Sure. Um, Cause we've been moving the horses and the cattle around and doing the grazing, but we're not going to get to all of it again by the time we leave. So I'm like, some of it I have to mow. That was cool. Um, I saw that zero point lower that you got. The zero turn. Zero turn. Yeah. It's a zero yeah. point gravity. Uh, zero. It's a, yeah, it's a zero point uh, energy free energy machine. Oh wow, <laughs> that's that, that's pretty amazing. I, you I just got an optimist. You bring that over to uh to our place, dude. Just... I have a whole story about the zero turn, man. Like we yeah. got it. I didn't really need to use it right away because we started uh-huh. doing the rotational grazing, so it was there for like a few weeks. And then I was like, there was one day where I I wanted to use it, and I went out there, it wouldn't start, it wouldn't turn over, and I'm like, nothing. I'm like, what the fuck. So then I took the battery. I have this battery charger that I bought. Charge the battery up. Okay. Oh, oh, but before I did that, it was like when you, okay, a lot of things, like if you have ATVs or you have things like that, a lot of times if you put the key in and turn it, but not trying to turn the engine over, you just like turning it, you know, like in a car when you turn it, you hear the bing, bing, bing. Mm-hmm. Like all the warning lights come on just to kind of, I guess, show you that they work. So a lot of times on a lot of things, you'll see like an oil change light come on or something like that. Yeah. So it was telling me low oil pressure. And I wasn't thinking clearly about it. I was like, oh, maybe that's why it's not turning on. I'm like, oh, maybe they didn't fill it up. So I checked it. It seemed like it was fine, but I'm like, oh, I'll just put a little bit more in it. Maybe that's the issue. Long story short, I poked my finger through the oil bottle to get the little tab out, but it went into the oil and I wasn't thinking about that. And then when I started pouring the oil into the, you know, where the oil goes, the little tab went into the, you know, the yeah. oil tank or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, that's probably not good because I don't really know how that tank is structured, right? Yeah. So I'm looking it up online. I'm in these different forums. People are like, it's fine. Don't worry about some people are like, oh, it's going to totally fuck up your engine, all this stuff, right? And then I called our neighbor down the street and asked his perspective. And he was like, no, nah, dude, it's probably just going to dissolve in there eventually. It's just going to sit at the bottom. Or if it does get through, it's just going to get eaten up by them. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I, the next day I called because I was like, maybe I should take it to like a place and have them take it apart and all this, which you could do. And I called this like lawn shop, lawn mowing shop. And the guy was like, oh no, it's fine. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. So then that was like a whole thing that was like this big challenge in my mind of like, because I don't know, I'm learning. That's like the learning process, right? So anyways, um, so that was kind of a cool learning experience, just all that stuff. Um, And then even yesterday, mowing, Great. Anyway. What happened with the fucking like you, 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 the tab went in? Cliffhanger. Okay, it's fine. You took it's out fine. the battery. What happened to the fucking machine? How'd you oh, get it, it to turn on? Um, it works great. Put the battery back in. Fine. You see Katie driving it? <laughs> yeah, yeah it works. I don't, I don't know. Like it, nothing was. There was no problem. I guess maybe it was the battery charge. I don't know why the battery would have discharged because it was just sitting there for a while. But anyways, now it works. And then mowed a lot yesterday kind of towards the end of of my mowing i hit this big rock and i saw it like fling out the side and then i was like right so then like now it's like vibrating a lot under the bottom and i'm like oh i broke this mower you know like that's what's going through my head right and i'm like well let me just slow down so i looked it up and 
there's many reasons why it can be vibrating like a belt's loose this and that like it can be bolts loose, whatever right so i'm like okay it's like instead of going into like a fear about it i'm automatically like let me just figure out what the issue is and learn because a lot of the fear comes from the unknown of like oh i don't know it's broken i don't know what happened you know what i mean but just stopping and being like okay how do i understand this and solve this problem or whatever right so anyways it's a learning curve so that's just that that's been kind of what i've been some of the things i've been focusing on and then when i'm doing that i'll be listening to stuff right so last this past week of every you know few days worth was like um also when i did all those chickens we saw a bunch of freaking chickens like 48 chickens 49 yeah. and that was like over like a three or four day period where i'd after i'd be done with the office i'd go home and they'd already be waiting because we'd have them in a cage or whatever and then i'd spend like through dinner time like just out there like doing that process you know i'd do like 10 to 14 at a time do you grab them by the legs and then put them in the cone yeah grab their body. Um, yeah i've just been grab. i just grab them and then what i did is zip tied the legs because otherwise they'll just like get in there and kick and get out like i'd look over there before i was doing that and they'd be like standing on top of the cone and be like <laughs> so i had to chase one <laughs> once and i was like all right let me just zip tie their legs so they just relax in there so i did stuff like that anyway so when I say I do research, I'm not like sitting down at the computer, like researching shit. It's like when I'm doing stuff, I'm also listening to stuff. So like when I was mowing yesterday, I listened to a bunch of, listened to this whole discussion with Jordan Peterson and that John Vervacki guy. Oh yeah. That, that yeah, guy. I, I had seen they had done a podcast re- together, but I didn't make the connection until after I started watching all this stuff totally separately. And then I, that thing yeah. got recommended again. I'm like, oh, this was that one where they're like, it's a conversation that transcends space and time and all that. And I'm like, oh, that's that guy talking. That's cool. So I listened to that. It was interesting. Okay. Um, but he's all about the meaning crisis and all this stuff, right? So he, all this kind of crisis. also together. is from the University of Toronto, or at least. Yeah, it, they were like at there. the same place. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so that's enough of my rambling. Um, so what was that point I was going to bring up originally before the... Who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to talk about the music. Yeah, but there was something before that. Before that, you're gonna was it had it had to do with the psychology that we were talking about the numbness? No, is after that. Oh, well, Hold on to your kids. No, yeah, you're nice. talking about some research. Okay, so doing. so we're doing lots of research. All right. Yeah, that was my long story, just to tell you exactly how I'm doing research. <laughs> but what I mean by research, just for all of you out there. So if you're listening to Destiny videos while you're mowing the lawn. That's research. Some people, I was doing some research. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll take you down the rabbit hole. Ooh. So I as like part this. of my research, you know, YouTube's like giving me recommendations on stuff. And I like a lot of weird music, as Drake knows. Right. Um, so there was this, there was this, uh, and this will all make sense. It might seem like some weird random details, but it'll it'll tie everything together. So I got recommended some video from this channel called neo punk fm okay not a huge neo pump or punk neo punk, punk. neo okay. punk it's not a huge channel i think it's going to become big i could just you could just see those signs like like i remember listening to candace owens before she was big why mm. I mean, i'm not saying i'm special because i found her it was recommended to me right 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 and it probably happened for a lot of people and that's why it started to grow and grow right so i could just kind of see like oh this has all those signs of something that's probably going to become bigger right yeah um like that Anthony Fantano guy who's like that music critic, probably a lot of people don't know the hell I'm talking about, but he became very big on YouTube. Um, and he started as like, obviously very small. So anyway, it's one of those kind of channels. It's like if these Gen Z kids, right? They're probably like teenagers, I guess. And they have this, it's like kind of a music review sort of channel. They don't really review stuff. It's just more, it's kind of hard to explain because Gen Z is a little different than like a millennial would have a channel where you review things. Gen Z just going to make random fucking videos. And I don't know how to explain it. So they have all these random videos that they do. And it's usually oriented around music and like music that's from the past, popular music, but also stuff that anyone above the age of 25 probably has no fucking clue what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Because it's all like for young people, right? Really. Right, right, right. So anyways, so I, I watched one of their videos and I don't remember why, but there was something about the thumbnail, something that caught my attention. And it was something about, it said, um, the, the, like the, the least, ins, the, the least crazy or least insane fans 
outside of a 100 Gex concert or something like that. And it's like, they'll do videos like that where they'll interview fans outside of a concert of okay. like these kind of like, I, I don't want to say underground bands, but underground from the perspective of they're not people that most, that older, you know, like millennials would even probably have heard of, right? Sure. Or millennials and above. So from my perspective, they seem underground, but they are actually pretty popular. So um, I watched this video and, you know, they're, they're asking all these weird random questions to the fans and stuff. And th there was this one point where they asked one of the kids, the, the kids that was at the outside the concert, like, how would you describe 100 Gex fans? And they said, LGBT and I was like, or LGBTQ or whatever. And I was like, that's weird because mm. just from the video so far and from, I was just like something LGBT about this. Like, it just seems like some weird punk kind of rock. I don't know what the fuck kind of music I did not listen to it yet, but just from what the people, the way where they were interacting, right. And describing things, it just seemed like it was like some kind of concert thing. Right. Yeah. Cause when you, when I, if I said an artist was LGBT, like what, what kind of comes to your mind? Uh, I'm thinking they're like really gay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like they're Grossing. about being gay. Right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. think about Sam, that whole Sam Smith thing or whatever. That, yeah, or exactly. Sam that, Shepard or what, what was the name? Sam, Sam Smith. Smith. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like, they're, they're trying to show their non-binariness or their gayness. And it's like, it's like that you start to see now. I think it'll make sense too. Cause like, I realized that's all a fucking act. Right. I mean, obviously. Right. Um, so anyway, so I was, I was like, that's interesting. And the, and the reason it stuck out too, is because another video had been recommended to me because I get like recommendations for like, I don't know, like some Portland, you know, radio station that hosts like music groups or whatever, or like, you know, like NPR does those tiny music yeah, yeah, yeah. concerts or whatever. Yeah. yeah those are awesome. So somebody, uh, one of the recommendations had been this, this group 100 gets and it was like them doing a dj set of their music for a crowd basically okay and i had watched it for a second and i was just like i don't really get it so i just clicked to the next thing right and um so anyways those things i was like something's weird about this so i went back and looked at that video of like them at doing the dj set and i was like i don't understand what does this have to do with lgbt right mm -hmm. and then because i'm clicking on these things another thing was recommended and it was this documentary about that band 100 gex right okay okay but wait are you gonna play the music first or are you gonna tell us should i should i should i play it first like give us give us some, give us some music. music give us some music okay, okay. yeah sorry i forgot you're getting a band from facebook it might or does it just mute it out no it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it just mutes it I mean, just people watch it on Rumble it's okay they'll they'll watch yeah. it live and it'll get muted and then you can also go look up these these yeah songs. we'll put it in the comments or something like the songs okay so let me uh here i'll play it i'll You're just ready play to the, find uh, your new favorite band everybody yeah play so, so play the first one that you played for us okay yeah. just the sound and then and then play the video though the other one because that was fun. okay okay if you have children this is not for them no yeah don't let kids listen or watch this this is not for them yeah um let me uh let me let me restart my spotify it's just being weird okay well while you're doing that i'll just sing for you guys um because i got the song stuck in my head it's Rihanna. I would describe Rihanna fans. I still as have the hundred Gex song stuck in my head. Yeah, yeah, that's. Well, I, I'm I'm looking forward to the to the second. No, the, song. There, there, there was so, and, and again, I'm just building context. But there was so there's these really specific points that I realized from doing this quote research, as I say. Um. But I see. I take the the arrows, right? I listen to this so that you guys don't have to. But now you ever see that that meme? The image of like the father with like his arms like out like yeah, this, yeah. the the military guy, and he's like taking all that air. Yeah, that's back. me, but it's like musical notes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll play yeah. this real quick. It's creative. Is it still sharing? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you little piss baby. You think you're so fucking cool, huh? You think you're so fucking tough? You talk a lot of big game for someone with such a small truck. Oh, look at those arms. Your arms look so fucking cute. They look like little cigarettes. I bet I could smoke you. I could roast you. And then you'd love it. You text me, I love you. And then I'd fucking ghost you. <laughs> Like a money machine. 
Okay, so um, that that song on Spotify has ninety two million plays, right? which is not small. I mean, at all. I think it is very catchy. It like, is. It is. Catchy. I, after I listened to it one time. It was stuck in my head um, because, like, the beat and everything, it's pretty well produced. It's just these two people. Okay, I'm after um, listening to it one time, walking down the street. Feels so pretty, like I'm shit. It's definitely <laughs> like if I didn't know anything about it. Otherwise, I mean, obviously, there's some parts of the lyrics and stuff that are whatever, but otherwise, I'd be like, that's a pretty cool song. Like, you know, like it gets you hyped up or whatever, right? So you could see the emotional attention draw element of, of it, right? For sure. The second time listening to it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like a Skrillex type of production. It, it's not necessary. It's not actually Skrillex, but it, it, there's yeah. some like familiarity to and it. And what's interesting about this group is that their style is all over the place. It's like mm. the, not every song doesn't sound like that. It's like okay. all over. And that was one of the things when I started looking into the, the critics talking about it, they're like, this is one of the, you know, it was like top, it was in the top 20 albums in like Rolling Stone in 2019. Crazy. I mean, it was this wasn't like some just random obscure thing to me it was totally obscure yeah and it's not like you're going to hear it on the radio i don't know i mean i don't listen to radio but i'm assuming not there's probably a lots of songs out there that had 92 million plays that i've never fucking heard of yeah. but it, within the subculture it's pretty big right and then it's also getting some mainstream like i saw that anthony fantano guy who i was talking about who's a he's a kind of blown up in the music critic world on youtube he was I, all about it like yeah i i just looked up who that was and after i saw the picture of him i was like oh i know this guy actually that guy yeah so yeah. anybody who yeah anyways so um he so that's that like one mark rebillier rebillier kind of, like there's maybe it's the mustache hair. i think it's the glasses yeah. there's something about it yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay so um and then i will do you want me to play the other thing yes yes yeah okay, like, that's what we've this, been this kind of ties it all together okay and it'll make even more sense when i explain okay so this is one of their more recent ones but you're gonna play the music video though, right? Yeah, I'll play the music video. Okay. I'll just put it on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the producer guy here, and then this other person over here that's popping up is the singer. is fucking stupid okay so <laughs> what's really fascinating about it okay is that the singer is a guy that transitioned oh okay so as i started oh. to put these pieces together i'm like um there, it's, I'm, I'm, there's there's like a certain point wow. i want to try to get across and that's why when we were talking the other day mitch and i was like the boomers and even i would say the millennials like who are like oh anti this trans stuff right it's just so stupid like i don't think they get it that 
this is not just a little, it's like, okay. And, and the, the point that sticks out to me about this group is that they're not talking about being trans. They're not trying to promote it. It's just a part of who they are. Mm. And then, so imagine, and I, as I started looking into it, I was looking at some, some, I guess it was a Reddit thread or something where somebody was like, cause I was trying to figure out like, is this person trans? Like what, what is this? Cause it started to piece the clues together. And, uh, and somebody was like, you know, is, um, I think that they go by like Laura Less. They're like, is Laura Less, was Laura Less originally a guy? And the person was like, yes, like you shouldn't say that because, um, you know, you shouldn't say were they originally a guy. Like they were, they're a girl who was born and even though they were a girl who was born into a man, to a male body originally, your gender is about your consciousness and your blah, blah, blah. And they were like trying to give the explanation to the person, right? And I was like thinking about this point of imagine you heard this song or you got introduced to it and you're like, wow, this is so cool. And you're listening to all their music, right? And then you find out, oh, that, that's not a, that's a trans person or whatever, right? Does that have an influence on that person? Heck listening? yeah. Heck yeah, it does. Especially imagine you're like a young, like I remember when I grew, when I was younger and I was listening to the Smiths and I wanted to like comb my hair like Morrissey, you know what I mean? Like, like stupid shit like that. And yeah. it's like, it, and, and then also now couple that with what we were talking earlier, what we we're talking about of like, you are not connected at all to like who you are. I mean, none of us growing up were, it's not mm. like, oh, just now it's some special thing. It's like, but you're so far removed from it because like, even when I was a kid, sometimes you had to just sit and be bored. I mean, we had video games, we had some things like that, but there was some level of, that's like with our kids. They can, there is some level of, they can be on computers, but it's very specific. But then afternoon, no computers. Yeah. And like, they'll be like creating stuff and we can go into all that stuff too. Like it, there's like a level where it's not about, I want them to be bored. It's just, then you have to deal with what's going on inside and like find some solution to it and not just how easy is it to just be like, oh, let me just check on some stuff. And then you're just like, yeah. And then, then you're just scrolling. And yeah. it's just. So you're never facing any of this point. And so now you look at the, the task that we have as self-perfected techno tutor destiny to support these new, these younger generations to really reconnect with who they actually are. And then yeah. it's so easy to not do that and to be totally lost. Right. So anyways, I'm, I'm looking at all this and I'm just like, wow, the trans thing like, so I was looking into the background of this, of that singer. And it's like, he went to, he was in college and then I don't know the details of it, but was going through a lot of stuff and then started transitioning. And one of the albums that he produced was about, I think it was like a solo album was about the pain of going through all of that. And also like the trauma that he went through growing up and so forth. Right. And so I was, I was making this point when Mitch and I were talking, I'm like, the i think the sort of okay like imagine like you're it's 1950s okay and you're like 40 years old and then these kids are listening to like fucking elvis or some shit you know and you're like these kids and they're they're rock music you know like you can't relate at all you're just like it's right. just this stupid thing but to them it's like you're not in their shoes seeing it the way they see it right and i'm just seeing how with the younger generation, especially like, I think for the millennials, they're sort of like a, it's like a different thing, but with the, with the younger generations, with the whole trans point, it's like, it's, it's not just a thing. It's the, it's the obvious logical conclusion to not having any fucking answer as to what's the purpose of life. And why do I feel the way I feel? And like, imagine you have anxiety because you have no purpose because there is no fucking purpose. It's, it's, mm. In terms of what's in front of you, there is no purpose. And then you didn't get any real support to, to as a child. So now like within you is like this kind of like child that like feels totally suppressed and doesn't know wh who it is or anything. And like is angry, frustrated, sad, depressed, all of this, and like, doesn't know what to do with it. And then it's like, oh, you're, it's because you're not like, you're being forced to be something that you're not. And here's, here's how you change that. 
And I could just see like in that frame of reference, it's the natural, the logical conclusion. And like you have, for example, Martin Rothblatt, right? Yeah. Right. This is just one of Martin Rothblatt's books. Originally Martin Rothblatt, right? Hey, Uh, you shouldn't say originally. (laughs) It was always Martin. It was always Martin, (laughs) even though I could find the Martin. (laughs) Martin Rothblatt invented Sirius XM radio. Martin Rothblatt, however, um, <laughs> wrote, wrote a manifesto. I, I, I have it. I just don't know remember what it's called um, on transgenderism and talking about it being the bridge to transhumanism. Right. And now imagine you have AI. And this is sort of the connection I started to make when I was listening to some of that John Vervacki stuff, right? Hang on, wait, hang on, wait, because well, right, there's, there's something within this of just like, um, you're feeling this anxiety, right? And you're like, ah, fuck, like, I, I don't feel connected to the world at all. I don't feel connected to myself. What well, must be the answer? It's got to be that I'm trans. Plus, you're being told everyone else before you has also felt this like, like anxiety within them, but they didn't know. They didn't know that it was that they were trans. They, they, they didn't have this understanding when they were kids. And so they, they yeah. just don't get it. And and I know you, you have more no, than that. Yeah. Um, but man, you've said this on a podcast way long ago, but definitely we, we've talked about it, about how, um, you know, the, the whole common core idea to, to get these kids learning in a different way than their parents learn and their parents can't help them with their uh, homework or whatever, and it's like, oh, you're just old. You don't fucking get it. You don't know things. You're dumb. And so Dude, it's that- just like the AI thing where it's like, slow down, slow down. And it's like, it ain't slowing down. It's like, right. let's just stop all this trans stuff. Like get it out of the schools. I'm like, I'm looking at all this and I'm seeing this context. I'm like, it's not going to stop. It's not, it, it can't. And, and so when the teachers are introducing this woke ideology or whatever you want to call it, right. Um, then it's yeah. like, why would the kid listen to you like at this and, point and here's the thing here's the, it's not even it's not even about the fucking trans thing right mm. right and this is the point like when i'm listening to this john Vervecki and he's talking about the meaning crisis and and he made this really cool statement in one of those it was one of the ones we played on a on a tt meeting that we were doing yeah and he, at that point where he was talking about um he's actually i don't know if i played this particular point but he but he said it's like we're going through this this identity crisis as humanity. Like, what is our purpose as humanity, right? Oh, oh, this, oh I'm gonna add this real quick. Back in the 1950s, a man got up, went to work, was at work all day, came home. They didn't have TikTok, right? No. But how did they, what did they have to not have to question anything? Television. Yeah, television or sports. Yeah. Like that's what sports is. If you think about it, it's like, it's like, I go to my job, I'm I'm there all day, I'm doing this. And then I come home and I can just, all my attention can be on that. So I'm never reflecting it. So it's, it's not that they necessarily experienced the anxiety. They may not have even been aware of it, but it was like you, um, you had some external stimulus to, it's like your purpose was go to work Yeah, and there was work. Yeah. And it, it took all of your focus. And then you came home and there was some other things. And I just had this realization too. Just it's like a an idea. Like if I look at Katie, for example, right? Like right now, I'm focused for doing this. What is she doing right now? She's with the kids. Yeah. She's focused. Like she's probably having them do their TT. She's probably like cleaning something or 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 helping them with something or making something, or she's making some bread, or who knows what they're doing right now, but they're doing something. Um, and she may even be listening in as well. Hey, Katie. Right. But now imagine, okay, uh, imagine a, a, a husband and a wife on a farm back in the 1800s and they have kids, okay? And the, the guy's out there mowing the grass or plowing the field or whatever. And the woman's in there, she's taking care of the chickens and she's doing this or she's baking the bread. It's like an all day thing, taking care of the kids, all that stuff. Now imagine you take that guy out of that, you give him a job. And he mm-hmm. works in a factory all day. He comes home. He didn't really want to do that shit. So he just relaxes and he's fucking watching football. The woman, she's just, what does she do all day? Because she has a vacuum cleaner that takes her 10 minutes to vacuum the house. 
She's got the Betty Crocker where she adds the egg. So she feels like she's making something, but she's not really baking anymore. Cause I watch Katie. She bakes everything from essentially from scratch. Yeah. Sometimes she'll even grind the flour herself, depending yeah. on what she's doing. Um, so you're removing a lot of that. And now the woman's like, has that time internally to be like, the fuck is the purpose of all this? Hmm. And then, oh, it's because you're a slave to the man. And you can see where that beginnings of feminism as like the questioning of purpose comes in. You yeah. didn't have men doing that as much because they had something to do. But now you've got the women out. Now they're in the workforce. So now they're just going hard grinding and all this stuff, right? And now the men are like, what's the fucking point? Like they go to college, they're like, what's the point of this? Everything is directed towards being female. Everything's directed towards you're a man, you're terrible, you're bad. There is no purpose. Like, and then think about it as more and more corporations consolidate the, the control and governments consolidate the control of everything was the opportunity for a man to like create something. Yeah. So I could just see like this sense of like the purpose that people had in the past, which may have covered up any anxiety they might've had of not having actual purpose. Also what filled in all the blanks for everybody. Religion. Oh, right. You know, Do you know what I mean? So, so like, so it's like, even if for a moment you started questioning, like, you know, what, what is the purpose of all this? Like, oh yeah, God, Jesus, heaven. It's like you already, but nowadays you can go a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old can go on the internet and be like, is God real? And you're going to have like 5,000 different people explaining how God isn't real, atheism, Buddhism, I don't know, whatever the fuck, like you'll find all kinds of shit. Right. That wouldn't right. have happened before. It would have been like, no, we go to church, like go pray, forgive, you know, whatever, get forgiven or whatever. So, so like, so, yeah. it, it's interesting because I'm, I'm thinking of it in the context of like, okay, when I look at football, let's say, for instance, it's like a gladiator sport, right? Like, and it serves the same purpose of going to the Coliseum. Like you literally have a stadium that's like pretty much the same shape as a Coliseum. And um, there's battle happening in the center of that Coliseum. And it's, it's entertaining. And it's, it served the same purpose as what happens? Your, your fucking people start getting a little bit, a little rambunctious or whatever. Give them a fucking show. Give them a show. Like show them like, yeah, people cutting their fucking throats and shit like that. Yeah. All right. Now go back to work. Okay. Yeah. And then they, they could just talk about that with their fellow slaves or whatever, their fellow plebs like, Hey man, did and you then you've see? got the stats and you're figuring out who got traded here and this and that. And it's just like, yeah. that becomes, it's, that's the same thing as TikTok. So we can't yeah. be like, TikTok is this new, I mean, it's definitely more effective at keeping your attention. It's definitely hyper-focused. But it's the same starting point is what yeah. I'm trying to say, right? Yeah. So I'm looking at all of that. Wait, think of, and, think of yeah. that in the context of like when you read Heaven's Journey to Life and, you know, what's being explained is the separation, you know, separating of this molecule from that molecule and then the separation of male and female, the separation of this and that. And it's like more and more and more separation look at that as okay you have the the coliseum and the fucking gladiators and then that turns into football every sunday night and then that turns into you know tiktok and this and like how much further do we have to go it's just to yeah. where like what the fuck like that's you doing that you're creating that we're, we society are creating that because of it, it's we're just participating in the mind Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, that, that's the point, though, is like all of this is just the externalization of the mind. Even the AI, it's like it's been trained. Uh, when, I, when we say AI, obviously, we're talking about these large language models that are coming out. It's not all AI. It's these specific things that we're aware of right now. But it's like they've been trained on all of the language and, and output of the human mind. So it's like how can you align that if you literally have trained it on – the fucking separation <laughs> itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyway, so this John Verbicki guy was talking about um, the identity crisis and he made this point. He was like, he was like the, the AI that's, that's coming and that's evolving and so forth is going to challenge our identity more than anything else. And so if people think that this trans thing is a problem, it's like, what happens when an AI comes that can interact with you as Noah Yuval Harari says, like, they're not just learning how to get our attention anymore. Like they've mastered that. Now they're mastering how to be develop intimate relationships with us. 
And that, right? that is crazy because, because that's the part that you said was missing from the online interaction. It's that yes. part that, so now imagine the AI can talk to you. So, okay. But also wow. imagine this, it's like, people are missing intimacy with each other. People don't know how to develop intimacy with another human being with themselves. Of course, without them, they don't, they don't know how to develop intimacy with themselves. And so they're looking for that online. They're not getting that online. And then like now, okay, the technology can develop intimacy with you. Obviously it's not going to be a real intimacy because it's not like the technology is feeling intimate. It's, it's like, well, how can I make you feel like this is an intimate connection. And, and, and it's getting... perfectly just your slave. It's like, imagine like the AI is texting you like randomly in the day, like, hey, bud, how's it going? How's your day going? Like, you know, like, and, and, and it's like, it's it's developing. And so then imagine, but its actual purpose is to get you to vote for Hillary Clinton or some shit. Right. <laughs> Do you see my point though? And it's like, so, so I just see like all of this, um, Oh, oh the, the reason I was showing that 100 Gex stuff and all of that is because I could just see how you have, like, I mean, if this was 2001, that would have just been some other artist that was really good, but that would have been some other, it wouldn't be trans, it would have been something else. They would just been right. like a weird artist. Right. You know what I mean? And it's this person who has gone through this process to, to, to deal with all this internal shit and what was interesting about that second video we played, the one called the hunt, uh, what was it Dumbest Girl Alive? Dumbest Girl Alive, yeah. It's like a guy who's gone through this process and then saying that they're the dumbest girl alive. Mm -hmm. Like that, it's like they're presenting themselves as like this sort of dramatic, emotional girl. Yeah that's their response to all the shit that's happened in their life and that they can't deal with and so forth is to just take on this persona. And, and the, the line that really stood out to me is when they're saying like a uh, lightning in my veins and something about Frankenstein. It's like, they feel like a Frankenstein, oh, wow. you know? So you can see how the next progression to that would actually be like, yeah, it's like transhumanism. It's like, man, I, I'm not a boy. I'm not a girl. I'm just beyond but it's this now, really weird, like, I'm sure people listening to this have got, have had those moments in their life where, like, you feel special with how fucked up you feel. You're, like, yes. really depressed or sad or anxious. And you're, like, just no one understands me. And you get off on that feeling special. It, it's that, a weird getting This off. is the next level of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's got to be a term for it. You know, that's like schadenfreude, which is, like, yeah, you right. get off on other people's yeah. suffering. It's, like, there's something. I'm sure there's a term for it, like, getting off Self on your own Right? <laughs> <laughs> instead of um, self-perfected yeah, yeah. <laughs> self that's the opposite of self-perfected get off on your own suffering <laughs> yeah it, it's a weird getting off because it's like you don't feel necessarily like good from it but you yeah you want it to end but you don't want it to end yeah you're like that, 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 so it, it just shows you what heaven's journey to life is explaining the whole time is no matter what experience of energy you're doing, you're still choosing separation. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole myth of the whole positive thinking thing or this, you know, weird emotional turmoil thing is like you have the negativity and then the neutral feeling and then the positivity. And even if you're hanging out in the neutral, you're still missing the point. It's like you got to read Heaven's Journey and you got to have techno tutor. Like there's otherwise you're going to be walking around fucking separate from yourself. And you're going to get to the end yeah. of your life and you're going to die. And you're going to be like, fuck. That, fuck and that's the point so I was saying about, about all of this stuff being like the logical conclusion when you don't have any other vocabulary, when you don't have any other way yeah. of looking at it. This, it's just like, well, and, you know, and, and I, obviously I kind of keep, I observe all sides of things. And when you look at the conservative side, which is just like, oh, these weirdo, idiot, trans people, you know, brainwashing our kids. And it's like, you don't get it because- you know, oh, there's this whole thing about like, and I see like Tim Pool says this all the time, like we need to win the culture war. Mm -hmm. Which is more appealing? Definitely. Some conservative person making like Christian, all this stuff, or like that shit I just played earlier. That shit you just played, that was definitely more appealing. Like they're not even trying. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're, it's like they're just doing the, they're just doing, it's like, it's like punk music. Yeah. You can't you can't artificially make punk music to combat something. It's it's the expression of the actual point people are at. It's so yeah, you can't yeah. you can't 
you can't manipulate the culture through some artificial point because no one's gonna fucking it's like these there's all these kids that are now suffering inside yes and that is way more appealing because it speaks to what they're actually feeling not like a judgment of the point because it's like oh well you just need you just need to jesus in church and all this stuff and it's like you're just judging me you're that's just, not fucking yeah. that's not the answer like i can see through that a mile away like that's so obvious and that was the point this john for guy said was really cool actually can i i'm gonna play that if you want to make any comments but what, yeah what? i'll make i'll make some comments right now um okay so at this point i i'm actually grateful in a weird sense for those who do push this forward not that i don't agree with it obviously um but it's because i i can remember and maybe Kim, you can speak to this but i can remember like really early in the days of sharing tt just from my experience even it's just like people were very not content not like they were happy about it but they 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 were in a sense, content with their situation, their station in life. Like they, they weren't trying to change anything, which is really weird because it's like, okay, but come on, you know, there's more to life than, but the, it, it just, the pain wasn't enough for them in a certain sense. Like, like the dog lying on the nail, you know, you know, the story of the dog lying on the nail, yeah. like the guy comes over, he's like, your dog is just like fucking wailing and like, what the fuck is wrong with your dog? And the, the owner of the dog is like, oh, he's lying on a nail. Why doesn't he get up and move? It doesn't hurt him that bad, right? And that, that's where our society has been at for a very long time. And now we're in a transition right now. It's not that I'm like grateful for these people going through this suffering and pushing all this bullshit, but I'm grateful for the moment that we're in because we're in a transition right now where people are like, whoa holy shit okay big pain uh need to get the pain off. it's like all the information is coming together for us to realize yeah it's like imagine trying to tell somebody in the 1950s who had an engineering job at ibm you know what i mean and like their kids were going to school and their wife stayed at home like how are you going to show them where things were headed and that yeah, they should question their purpose and not and question their religion and all this stuff like it's just they, they there was that information wasn't even there for them and now i mean it's all here like all the information is here and i mean i think all that's really occurring right now is still a lot of people are kind of like trying to hold on to it's like it's like we're still in our minds living in the past but not realizing where we're at now and so it's like you're kind of thinking that some kind of approach like okay Remember it's like the we Titanic is sinking and people are still trying to hold on to the Titanic because like they don't they don't know that there's a lifeboat there. They don't see it yet. <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> well, it's like remember, remember when we started talking about the chat GPT stuff? Not when? the first time. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Which was yes. like going, I'm like, did that happen? Like, yeah, like right? remember even anyways. <laughs> when it became very public, right? And now everyone can use it. And we're like talking about it recently, like this year, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, end of last like year. Into last year, right? And, and then it gets to the point where they're like, it's like writing college essays. It can do your, it can do SATs and do reasonably well. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then I'm like, I see on my Facebook, somebody's like, oh, I'm so proud of my, son or whoever graduating from college or going or graduating high school going to such and such college next year and i'm like you're wasting your i mean who the fuck is putting their kid in college now why yeah. they yeah. cannot see i mean so they but it's like i know within a lot of people they're like well but you know get a job and all this i'm like for maybe maybe they go to school for four years and then after that they get a job for a couple years but do you think in 10 years that 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 four-year experience is going to pay off 10 years from now like in terms of it's what's still available a denial it, it's a denial definitely not i mean it's already not working for people but they're still stuck in and i was talking with avery the other day and he was he calls me and he goes cameron automation right and i'm like yeah and he's like the system has automated everybody into all these points mm -hmm. like you're automated into put your kids in school you're automated into 
just go look for a job. You know, oh, and uh, I saw some people were posting this. I guess Andrew Yang made a blog post talking about IBM. Right. There was like 7,800 jobs that they're not going to hire now because there's, and they're saying because of they're using AI now. Yeah. Dropbox, 500. As far as I can tell, they, 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 they fired 500 people. Right. That's yeah. what it seemed like it said, um, which was 16%. That's a sixth of their workforce. Yeah. And saying AI. Um, yeah. Like AI is the new excuse for everything. Like imagine you're with a you're in a relationship and you're like, you want to break up with them and you're just like, hey, I don't think it's gonna work out. We need to break up. And like, why? Like just AI. No, you wouldn't say AI. <laughs> like, I've been seeing somebody else. Who have you been seeing? AI. AI. <laughs> it's my phone. It's a, you know, on Snapchat, you know how they release all the AIs. I've been talking to mine and Dude, um, I was, I think I was talking to you, Mitch, or somebody about the, these, uh, new beauty filters on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Have explain that. that one let me, let me, let me look it up, man. Uh, here, there's, 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 I am, I am going to share something. There's a really, really, really important point here too. Oh, actually uh, it's, it's along the lines of that shit you were showing me, Drake. Which shit? <laughs> that shit. Oh, the shit that I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that fucking insane? Wasn't that insane? Uh, yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? Uh, let Mitch? me uh, let me let me share my. I'll 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 save it. I'll save it for a cliffhanger. I don't know if any of these this, particular feel, feel this. I don't know more. if any of these particular things are what I'm looking for, but I'll just pick something. Uh-huh. Now we have these AI-driven beauty face filter apps to contend with. Damn, I mean, that was just fucking weird. Look at this shit. You can feed it with the most horrific photo with no makeup, bad lighting, you name it. And with one click, bam, it'll turn you into the oh, best possible Hollywood version of yourself. It's like glamour on steroids. And unsurprisingly, these apps are explo- um, Okay, okay, okay. Right. There was another the shit, one that I watched that where I it was like you. in real time. Show the shit that I sent you. Hold on, is this the one? Let me check. No, this is not it. There was one I was looking for. Maybe it's no, it's not that. I I, I don't know where it's on this. Um, what was the thing you were? The the thing that I sent you. Remember that? Where, that where did you send it to me? Uh, in Signal, right? And uh, um, it's just the first video. Is it the? What I was referring to. I saw it on Facebook. I don't know if it's the same thing. Uh huh. I saw it on Facebook too. I I okay, also but the, the, I also. But this is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it should be the same thing. Like I also put, uh, reposted so it. I couldn't the, get the thing you sent me to load. That's the only reason I'm saying that. Oh, I see. Now I it's see. not. Uh, oh, what the loading fuck? Loading on my it? computer either. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind. Just go to the one I'm sending malware. <laughs> I said, find I, it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll find it for you real quick. But the, the, the video I was looking for with the with the it's the Instagram beauty app or whatever, there was someone doing it as a video. Uh-huh. They were showing like on versus off, and they were explaining it uses these GAN. It's like generative. Adversarial oh, dude, that's, or that's what I sent you. That that's too. what I'm saying. It's the same thing. Yeah. And it's not a filter like that's like following your face. It's literally replacing every pixel. It's a new image. It's like making a video that's not real, replacing your face in the video with a different. It's like pixel by pixel. It's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not like if you move like the lips slip off or something, it's like, it's not your lips anymore. It's, it's a, it's a video generated by the AI. It's like a deep fake essentially. Yeah, and that's the comment. new beauty filters. You found it? Yeah, that's it. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Saddle up. <laughs> Mount up Patriots. God, I'm gonna turn off the audio. I want some. Ga- I want yeah, some 100 yeah. gex. I want some 100 gex. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sounds good anymore except 100 gex. All I can. Yeah. But look at that. Look at how it's like. Okay, you just change that car entirely, you know, or or you're able to make the dog smile or like. Let's see if I can. Oh boy. <laughs> Look what they do with this cat. Just like, okay, cat's Wink. closing its eye. Yeah. <laughs> insane. It's so insane. Like, okay, imagine Dude, this was, was that presentation Photoshop. originally? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Asian. 
<laughs> right? Am I right? Yeah. Definitely yeah, an Asian okay. person. Now they're not. They're white now. <laughs> That's crazy. And they're closing their eyes. <laughs> but okay, Photoshop. So, so here's what I saw. All with the this. modeling. Yeah. What what I saw with this is just like, okay, you no longer Oh, now they're doing plankton? <laughs> oh, we're it's game over, man. <laughs> You know, they do viruses. <laughs> your, your own image. <laughs> but isn't that insane, man? Isn't that insane? Like, wow, wow. Um, oh, okay. Let me let me play the John Verbecki thing because this goes back into all the points we were talking about. Okay, yeah. Mitch had something he wanted to share. Oh, okay, yeah, share I'll, 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 I'll share it. So we all then go through this moment of realizing what the fuck like drake you were alluding it to earlier or alluding it to it um how it keeps i don't remember exactly what part but the way where you said like what's it gonna take for us to all go like what the fuck and people are hitting more and more of that point where they go what the fuck like i know everyone listening to this podcast now you've you've seen it at some point you're like what the fuck something has to change and the critical fucking moment is the moment you show up and talk to that person or someone in your clubhouse or someone on your team that's part of this movement goes and has that real conversation and builds that real intimacy because if if not nothing else is going to wake someone up like they have their limited vocabulary they're just going to listen to 100 gex or whatever the fucking equivalent is And that's going to keep fucking putting them into their mind more and more. And so this this is what is like unconditional self-responsibility is now each of us going out there and systematically sharing. Like the point with Avery, it's like automation. Automating the sharing. Not by some Facebook post, whatever. Like, sure, you can post it. You should have Facebook, but don't don't think that that's the real automation. In the context of us, it's like... You automatically do it. You don't think about it. It's like, yes. um, I'll tell you this real quick story. Like there was this point where I forget what it was specifically, but like we were talking with Seneca and she didn't want to do something. There was some resistance to it. And we were like, well, you're just experiencing resistance, right? So what do we do when there's resistance, right? And Katie goes, well, look, she said, Seneca, can I tell you about something that I'm, resi- that I, that I don't want to do, but that I'm right? That I'm going to do it. And she goes, what? And I forget what it was, but she was like, I don't want to do whatever the thing was. She said, you know what I'm going to do? She's like, what? Said, I'm going to do it. Right. And I was like, oh, you know what I don't want to do Seneca? She said, what? I said, I don't want to go out and move the fencing around for the animals. And she goes, but what are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to do it. Right? And she goes, oh, okay. Well, do you know, I don't want to do this. And I was like, okay. She goes, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm, like, well, I'm going to do it. That's right. Awesome. So it's 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 like I don't want to fucking make dinner, you know. But I have to. It's like it has to be automatic. You can't they, don't let the thought just stop the thought. Just gonna do it. And that, that that's the thinking. The, system right there. the thinking that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. The thinking yeah. about it instead of just doing it and thinking about how it's gonna go and projecting and this and that and it's like that thinking. It's the, that's the same fucking thing. That is leading a person to be trans that's leading a person to um katie was telling me oh man well this will be another thing have you ever heard of this thing called soft white underbelly oh yeah 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 katie, yeah, yeah, katie yeah. was telling I, me about it she sent me so some videos me, on that guy she was telling me some stories about these kids and like these people that they like it's like on skid row which is like yeah. this homeless section where it's like a lot of prostitution and stuff and like it's just like so crazy hearing all those stories of like Anybody who's like, oh, I mean, what, what, this, what is this negativity? What are you talking about? That doesn't exist. Every, you know, things are on the up. And it's like, go look at that. Go look at the actual fucking reality. Like this girl, her mom had her when, when the mom was like 14 or something. And then she, uh, the dad went to prison for killing the mom because they were in some kind of arguments all the time. And then this girl had to go live with somebody with her grandmother who had raised their mom originally, I think. Or no, 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 that wasn't that was. Then this girl that was being interviewed is having a kid. 
and the kid's going to live with the grandma because the girl who's like now 14 or whatever is a prostitute on skid row mm. you know like that's the real fucking reality for somebody's actual reality sad. you know and then it's like oh but i, I don't want to go do this or i don't want to do that or i'm and the thing is like um it's it's like this point of being totally disconnected from who we really are and instead we're listening to an ai in our fucking mind yeah that's all it is it's like if you don't think oh well, the ai ain't gonna trick me it's like if you're thinking about shit and it's convincing you to do something and you're thinking that's not best that's an ai that's fucking intimate with you yeah to clarify if you yourself are thinking about something and you're like going back and forth with yourself and you're being persuaded in your own mind by your own thinking to not do the thing that's best that is an ai that is tricking you and you've you've already fallen apart great should um, i should i play I'm, I'm gonna play that john rebecca but should i play that noah yuval oh the noah yuval harari um yes there's a point that he makes in that that we talked about before when he talks about the lemoyne guy and and how um the basically the the guy from google who was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and he says he says that that guy was convinced that the uh ai was sentient but we had talked about that before and it didn't appear that he was actually convinced that it was sentient it appeared like because everything that he talked about in the interviews that came out of that was actually about the ethics of using this ai and, and how it would uh shape society and it sounded like he was more so using the sentient point as a sensationalism to get people. yeah yeah i, I yeah. think so too so that may have just been a bit of salesmanship but but the point still stands like regardless yeah, no, for sure. like yeah for sure for sure um i just thought that was really interesting but yeah you're right i didn't i because I, there was a point where i was like no is that what actually happened like, let me share this jumper back you though because this kind of is a cool point First of all, apologize and also to uh, um, restructure things. I think theology, in a weird sense, broadly construed as the attempt to understand human spirituality and its place in the world, is going to become weirdly important. Uh, where, you know, the the where theology and philosophy overlap with cogsci, it's going to be increasingly like we we're going to have to rapidly reformulate and restructure what spirit and soul mean and how we can talk and think about them um and so i think that's going to be an important place in which this identity issue is going to be taken up and that overlaps tremendously with the meaning crisis because the degree to which that's not working for people is the degree to which they're going to be even more spiritually hungry and, you know and if you have a very if you have a very sort of basic notion of wisdom and meaning you know, wisdom is just acquiring sorry meaning is just sort of a uh, you know acquiring control and uh, power these machines are going to undermine that in a very significant way and if you think of wisdom as just sort of common sense um these machines are going to challenge that for you um so you know questions about what is spirit what is soul what is wisdom? What is meaning? These questions are now going to be taken up, I think, in very powerful ways. And the traditional legacy religions, as they are now, do not have the resources to address it because they have not had to ever confront this problem before. One of two things will happen. One of them is They'll, they'll they'll dig in and there'll be nostalgia and you'll get fundamentalist and just no so human beings right have this magic secret sauce um and just right the other and what i'm hoping for just, just real quick to clarify when he says humans have this magic secret sauce meaning like no humans are special we have souls these machines don't have souls so we're fundamentally like separate and mm -hmm. what he's saying is like at a certain point people are not going to buy that because the machines are going to seem so advanced. And if we haven't redefined what that actually means, soul, spirit, and so forth, they're not going to buy into the religious argument that we're special and different somehow fundamentally from the machines. Hey, let me add something in here. I'm um, trying to provoke. Because uh, I was just remembering how I was listening to this woman 
um, speak about uh, just speak about the school system, the education system, and how it came to exist, and how what she was taught and what was being taught to others in her position, not necessarily teachers, but that teachers were implementing this unconsciously. They didn't. They weren't aware of it. Was how to question a child or cause them to question their own beliefs. And that what happens in school is a child is brought in and then they are then questioned on their own beliefs to get them to convert to whatever it is that the system wants them to convert to, right? right. And, and the system's really good at this and we're seeing that clearly today, right? Um, and she was talking about this back in like the 50s or something like that, right? Well, it's interesting because Okay, they're, clearly they're good at that. You can see the effects of that right now, right? Kids go into school and they become a completely different person. They go to college, they become a completely different person. And, and parents complain about this all the time. Um, anyone who's aware will, will, will be aware of this. But imagine the AI is gonna be 100 million times better at causing an individual to question their own beliefs and question who they are and, and everything that they stand for and get them to accept whatever new concept is being pushed by the system, right? The AI is going to be way better at that because it knows you very intimately. It knows humanity and how and people it's, think. And it's tested. Yes. And, and like, it, it, it like can't help but learn from every interaction. And it doesn't take it, it, it like is mathematically designed to right. learn. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't get, it doesn't get a feel bad about rejection. Right. And it's like, okay, I'll, I'll just try that again. And it's like, like you were saying earlier, your AI is going to be texting you throughout the day. Like, Hey buddy, how's it going? Like, you know, it seems like you're a little bit down and like you're ignoring the AI or whatever you're, cause you know, it's your AI or whatever. And you're like, ah, I can ignore it. And it, like, it's just well, what like, happens when it FaceTimes you and it's like, it's like you're FaceTiming with some beautiful woman that's like your girlfriend that just hey. like misses you. <laughs> and they're like, not like kidding. nagging you. They're just like, hey, I'm here for you. And like, yeah. I know and you like, hey, time. hey, remember this time that we had sex on the beach in Paris? And it like sends you a video AI generated of you and them like on the beach. <laughs> yeah. Like, can you guys imagine that that's possible? You saw that fucking GAN <laughs> thing we were looking at earlier. Dude, that or or watching her or or like. Is, is the there beaches in Paris? In her? No, I don't yeah, know. No, in that, Paris. I don't, I don't think there's beaches in I don't Paris. Think so. I think it's a city <laughs> in the middle but of But in Paris. the world of AI, there are, could be beaches in Paris, okay? So, <laughs> and you so might be yeah. convinced. <laughs> For sure. Dude, remember when you were sharing us um, that song, the Freddie Mercury song, right? And uh, it was Freddie Mercury singing Thriller, right? And the way that you were presenting it, I was like, Damn, is there a version of Thriller that I haven't heard before? Like, because because yeah, I'm for so context, to... we were on a meeting and I started off the meeting playing Thriller, and everyone's like, and somebody goes, I think it was Avery's like, oh, Michael Jackson, and I'm like, why are you saying Michael Jackson? Like, I was acting like, what are you talking about? Like, this is not a Michael Jackson song. And I even saw his face because I went back to look at the recording, and he was like, like he goes, and you could see him go. Michael Jackson. Yes, it is. Like, <laughs> like, like, what are you fucking talking about, Cameron? You know, like, <laughs> it was so funny. Like, you know, I couldn't get into that. Data, but it was just like, my point was just to show, like, what if you grew up in the world where that version is just as popular or something, you know? But, but okay, but I'm, I'm just looking at it from the perspective of, because I'm always showing Christine songs where I'm like, oh, okay, so you know this song? Yeah, that's not who sings that song. Well, that's not the original of that song. You're listening to like the third iteration from this other artist or whatever. But originally that came from here, which came from here, which came from here. Like I'm always showing her shit like that. And she's always like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. You know, oh, like, so you're autistic like me, Drake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on the spectrum. Yeah. Um, I, I, but, I, I can relate. But, I, it's, it's either autistic or just masculine. One of the two. <laughs> A little bit of it, yeah. Yeah, a little uh, bit of, yeah. But, um, but so, okay, imagine that with AI, where it's just getting, everybody believes something different because everybody's been told something different and you're like, wait, what? No, but that that comes from this. And like, you know who does a really good job of this? Um, CJ Hopkins in Zone 23 mm -hmm. does a really good job of 
describing that phenomena of this came from this, which came from this, but no, remember a whole bunch of people just threw in some random information to kind of deceive you. So we're not really sure what's real and what's not. And so some things are being edited to say that's not real. And then they're being reintroduced to say, actually, we found out that is real. And like, that's the confusion that people are going to live in. That's, I'm, it's kind of challenging to convey that to people today, but that's where we're headed. It's so I, I was, I was listening to a Tim Pool thing the other day, or just yesterday, rather, where they were talking about that whole, uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter what it was about, but the, he was like, um, pretty soon he goes, we won't even, it won't matter. None, nothing will be real. Oh, like the, and he's like, he's like, I'm just going to say, huh? It, it, like something like the Pope in the bubble jacket. Like it wasn't that specifically, but it was like, he was just talking about, he's like, when somebody says, oh, but didn't you see Tucker Carlson said this or whatever? Cause they're trying to use that as evidence of like, oh no, that's a deep fake. He's like, I'm just going to say about everything, no matter what, no, that's a deep fake. Even if it wasn't, because yeah. at a certain point he's like, it won't matter anymore. Everything will be and won't be. No one will know. He's like, yeah. that's that's what we're getting to. And it's it's like we can see it. And it's difficult for people to see what they can't see. Because they can't see it. And what they are focused on is just sort of like that. I just got to go to work and come home and watch football. And like that's what they're thinking about. So they're never taking that time of like, okay, let me actually look at what's going on here. Let me put it together. Let me have that space for a moment to actually process. And they're process even even if they have a moment, they can't use that moment because their processing ability is so low. It's yeah. just like they um, they don't have the working memory to be able to like sit there Dude. and really just even even for one second. Like when I'm listening to an audio, like like the, any of these things, while I'm listening, I'm like, right. I've already written an essay about it. You know what right. I mean? And I'm right. like, oh, okay, right. I can talk about that later. You know? Right, 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 right. There's so much more I want to get into. I know we talked about like uh, deep fake Tom Cruise. We talked about that on the podcast, right? Or did we? I don't know if we talked about that specifically. Yeah. Dude, that shit is fucking insane. But go ahead, play the rest of this clip so we can talk okay. more about this. And then... I don't know how much more we want to play. I'll just keep playing until. Okay. There, it's, there might be an, ob- I think there's an obvious point where he stops. Let me back it up a second. The other, and what I'm hoping for and trying to provoke, but I was a little too harsh in the first video, but what I'm trying to provoke is I want to see what. And I, and I mean this really genuinely. Like, can these religions really like resurrect themselves, restructure themselves, reorganize themselves uh, to deal with this? Now, some people are dismissive of this and say, oh, we don't need religion. Well, I don't, if you know my work, I'm not advocating especially any of the the propositional theories of religion. However, what we do need is we need to really fundamentally reorganize culture and society and fundamentally reinterpret who we are and what the cultivation of wisdom and meaning mean and how, what self-transcendence means and what's embodiment means. We, we and, and the only thing that has ever done that on the scale that we need is religion. So we need something like that right now. And that's my answer to people who say, well, we don't need, well, Give me an example of something else that is up to the task. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not advocating for any religion. And I've even given you an argument that we can't just go back. We've got to somehow go forward in a really evolutionary, revolutionary way. Um, so I do think that's what's... So, I mean, is that not what's all perfected? When you take technology or destiny, you put it together, that's what it is. That's why we have the clubhouses. Like, that's... Does that make sense? Like that yeah. is what it is 100%. because it's the principles. And then if, if, you, if you just have the principles, the problem is within a person in their vocabulary, they are not processing purely what this means. They're, they're processing a lot of other things. Like, like Drake, can you talk about that point you were talking about from the parenting series on Equoff? Oh yeah. 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 About like um, the way that we, we integrate words. It's like, okay. You may see a word and in that word is a letter that just physically you are not integrating it. Specifically, the the point that that I was making was this, like you have a physical reaction to a letter in a word. And so when you hear that word, it's it's like 
you hear it and it's fine. Okay. I've heard the word. You understand the word, but when you're reading the word, you're like having a physical reaction to it. And so you, you recognize the word, but you're like, for some reason, I just, I don't get reading. Like it, it just doesn't click for me when I'm reading. And that's because people don't understand just how you integrate words. Like, okay. Ask any fucking parent, ask anybody at all. How is it that you actually integrate words into your vocabulary, into your understanding, into like you understand this word and you understand what it means and how do you, how does that all come together? How does that all coalesce? How does that all click? Nobody actually knows or, or the average person rather doesn't actually know that they're like, I don't know, you just start talking and then kids just pick it up. They just pick it up. Okay. So why can't you just do that when it comes to learning Chinese and you're like, uh, Cause I'm not a kid. It's just a different kid brain. I don't know. Like, like people actually cannot articulate effectively what is happening because they don't understand it. But if you look at it from, well, it, the, the actual understanding of it, if you study destiny, it's actually really clear. And it makes a lot of sense where your understanding of something is you, you have a, a physical integration. You have a, a mind integration as well a being integration, right? And if you are physically rejecting even a portion of that, that word, like a letter in a word, you may experience it as in the mind, you're like, oh yeah, I, I get that word, it, it makes sense. But physically you are resisting it. And so what you'll experience just in general will be this, uh, okay, I can hear things being said and that makes sense. So I, I, I prefer listening to audiobooks. You hear so many people saying that today. I prefer listening to audiobooks, right? But like when I read, I just, uh, it, I can't read. It, it doesn't make sense. Like uh, it, it just doesn't click for me. You know, like I, I, I get, I can read. I, I get the words. But it's just like, it's, I, I get it a lot better when, when I hear it. It's like, okay. So part of what that means is you are having, you're not able to integrate physically what you are learning. Or it's just you're... compounded to that point. It's the right. compounding result of certain points not integrating physically when you're reading. I want to play this real quick, just to back up what you're saying. Check this out. This is from, you guys already know about this, but this is from Jordan Peterson podcast on AI. Interesting. Mm. Oh, Dawn yeah, of yeah, computerized yeah. hyperintelligence. All right. And I'm just yeah. going to play this real quick. One of the things that appalls me about our education system is with the computer technology we have now, Every child should be an expert word and letter recognizer, and they Absolutely. should be able to, say, read music, because a computer can teach a kid how to automatize perception with ex extreme precision and accuracy, way better than a, than a human teacher can manage. Like, just in case anyone's not aware, that's exactly what the fuck we're doing with TechnoTutor. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're, and we've been doing for years. <laughs> and we're specifically not utilizing AI so that you don't create a point where the child is developing a relationship with an AI that becomes the authority over them, that they're simply automating their perception and their ability to process information. You see what I mean? It's like the same reason why it's not on an app on a phone. Because yeah. do you really want the, Oh, man. I saw an ad. Did you guys watch that ad for the hooked on, the hooked on phonics? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I should play that, dude. <laughs> dude, the ad is hilarious. Where, where did I send it? Did I send you it? Sent it the in chat? Signal. Yeah, the, in Team Life. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, let me find it. I'm gonna play it. Dude, okay, so so while you're looking for that ad, um, it just reminded me of like, okay. I maybe I'll tell this afterwards, but I, I had a conversation with a guy and it was literally just like the guy was like not interested in education at all. He's got two kids or whatever. And um, the only thing that he was interested in was like teaching financial literacy to older kids. And I'm like, okay, um, but you've got two kids, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, how old are your kids? And I'm asking him like where they go to school and all that. And, you know, to make the long story short, I got this average person to see everything that we're talking about really clearly. I got him to go from don't really care about it, not interested, don't need that, to holy shit, I need to see what you're talking about right away. Be because it, it, was, it was really interesting 
because all I did was share with him, hey, here's this context that you need. Here's what's going on with AI. Here's here's what's more going on. I, I know you don't know this. So let me explain further. Let me explain this. And like he had every rebuttal or objection in the book, uh, just like, oh, but you know, th- that'll take care of itself or as kids get older or as technology comes out or this or that or whatever. And I, it was so funny because I was just like, okay, but obviously you don't know about this. And then I would show him something and he'd be like, fuck. And I'm like, okay, and then this, and then this. And and then to the point that you were saying of like, specifically with the the apps, why why it's not just on your iPhone or whatever. Um, I was like, really consider this. You know, the AI is biased, right? You know, it's not just like a neutral thing, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get that. I'm like, no, no, no. You understand that if you put something into the AI about like, hey, tell me why, uh, you know, transgenderism isn't good for, for somebody. It's like, no, transgenderism is, is good. Like, don't you understand? Like, this, that, and, and then I was like, and also, you know, that during, you know, the whole pandemic, COVID, whatever you want to call it, right? During that whole time, there were people who were speaking up and saying, this doesn't look right. And I'm not going to go along with this. And, you know, for those people, they didn't take whatever, you know, interventions or whatever, they didn't fall for it. And that's their health. There were a lot of people that they just said, you know what, this is what everybody else is doing. I'm going to do it too. They went along with it. And now their health is in crisis, right? Now they're, they're in trouble. Like how much would it be worth to be able to see the information for yourself and go, you know, something about this is off. I'm not just going to rely on the technology. I'm not just going to rely on what somebody's telling me something is off and I'm, I'm just going to go look into this for myself. But if, if you're one of these kids growing up right now, you're not able to do that. And I was sharing that with him and he was like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was like, do you really want the AI that's not, that's, that is biased. That's not just going to be unbiased and, and just teach your kid what they need to know. Do you really want that instructing your child, that giving your child values, that, telling your child what's important and what's not. He's like, <clears throat> actually, no, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was really cool. Um, but that, that's what we're talking about is like giving your child that ability to process information without the influence of basically the system trying to uh, sneak its way in there and, and, you know, fuck your, your family over. But yeah, did you find that clip? I did. I was looking for another thing too, but um, I don't know if I want so much context if to watch the whole thing, but there was this video I was watching. It's called Identity Crisis, A Detransitioner's Harrowing Journey Back from Gender Madness. Mm. And uh, it was just showing like, there was this one part where they were showing like their their chest and like the scars from like removing their breasts. And it was like getting all like, uh, I don't know if infected is even the right word, but it was like fucked. Like, and I mean, it's just one of those points where it's like, she was 11 years old, decided that she was a girl or girl decided she was a boy, I guess. And then by 17 was doing all of the hormone therapy, surgeries, et cetera, like cutting off her breasts. You know, it's just, just to back up that point you were talking about, it's like, and they're just being, I'm not blaming the AI. The AI is just the externalization of all this bullshit. It's just, right. Um, okay. But let me, let me find, what was it I was going to share next? Hooked on phonics. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have some other things I want to share, like that I pulled up. Okay. This is I just typed that email for John Vervecki. I'm going to send him this podcast when we publish it. Nice. Okay. Here we go. Hooked on phonics worked for me. Hey, that's me when I was younger and blonder and cuter. Gosh dang it, I was a cute kid. Hooked on Phonics helped millions of kids like me learn to read in the 80s. But when I got these down from the attic, are these things 3D printed? I tried teaching my kids the old fashioned way. This is the letter G, as in. Bro, get up here knock it off and learn how to read! We'll try again when you're asleep. Then. I discovered the all new Hooked on Phonics, complete with workbook, storybooks, and this amazing new app that tricks my kids into thinking they're playing video games. This isn't your grandma's Hooked on Phonics. It's been totally redesigned for children in today's digital age. So get ready to be on a first name basis with your local librarian. Your taste in books is impeccable. 
And you taught your kids to read all by yourself? Best of all, this updated version comes with a 100% guarantee that your child will read in just 30 days. If your child isn't reading after 30 days, Hooked on Phonics will refund 100% of your money, guaranteed. It replaces Xbox time with hundreds of exercises designed like the levels of his video game. So he hasn't even learned that he's learning yet. Hooked on Phonics has dozens of hours of fun, yet educational videos. That screen time, I don't feel guilty about. Hooked on Phonics is so confident that your child will be reading in just 30 days that they'll send you this practice pack, complete with a workbook, two storybooks, stickers, and use of the Hooked on right. Phonics app. So you get the point. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. You was there more? The, there's more. There's, oh, is there more to it? Hold on. There's more. There's the, there's the you can relax or some, some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah app for an entire month for just a dollar. So if you're stressed this about teaching it. your kids to read, let the all new parent trusted kid approved hooked on phonics do the work for you for just a dollar. Click the link below and join the millions of people around the world who can say hooked on phonics works okay, for it. us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My I don't know question, which one is more dumb, the 100 to that. My question is, first off, where is their father, right? Why, why is the father not in right. the commercial at all? And then who is this Latino guy who she's clearly got the hots for, who's their, apparently their local librarian and her masseuse? Like, <laughs> he's clearly not the kid's father either. Yeah, there's some <laughs> serious weird shit going on there. Um and it's like you're tricking your kids into to not realizing that they're learning. What like it? Just just think about the like. Okay, so someone gets this program from that perspective of I'm trying to trick my kids into doing something so that they're learning. What is that? What kind of relationship? Just the word learning mm -hmm. is that child going to develop toward that word? Like it's it's negative. It's something you don't want to do. It's something like, like uh, there's the going to be resistance to it. You're embodying and living the point that I'm tricking you into learning stuff. Yeah. Because you shouldn't want to learn stuff because learning isn't fun. Yeah. And it's like, it, it, and all it's doing, obviously, we know about hooked on phonics. Um, it's getting you to like probably less than a third grade reading level. Right. Whereas my four year old is already. Beyond that. Oh, I'll, I'll, I was going to tell you that. I just, I'm glad I remember this because it's a point I kept wanting to bring up, but I always forget. So have you ever read, I'm just trying to think of an example. Um, okay. You don't know about Winnie the Pooh, right? Everyone yeah. knows about Winnie the Pooh. But have you ever actually read the Winnie the Pooh books? Um, no, I don't think so. so. Actually, there's, there's like, like the, there's the like the stories. Books? There's like, there's like an actual, the original written by the guy's last name is like Milne or something like that. And oh. he wrote these stories and we have them all in one collection. We've only got it like a few weeks ago, I guess probably got it at the bookstore or something. Right. And it has some illustrations, oh. um, but it's, it's more heavily focused on the text. And there's like a few illustrations here and there, but it's not the original. When you see like the pictures of the rabbit or the poo, it's, they don't look like the versions that are in your mind because those were created by. Okay. Gotcha, whatever gotcha, company gotcha. made. I don't know if it's Disney. I think Disney eventually bought. Winnie the Pooh, I don't know if they they, they, they did time. eventually buy it. I don't think they had but, it. But the Winnie the Pooh character, like in the books, the illustrations that originally went with the original book, he doesn't have a shirt. You know, he doesn't have that red shirt. Like Rabbit doesn't look that way. Tigger, it looks like a normal tiger. It doesn't, those are like Disney or whatever characters that were created separate from the actual original point. Sure. And and the actual vocabulary level, I'm not saying it's super high vocabulary, but it's um, let me see if I can find an example. Um original. That's funny because I have a um, the who like you're like looking at your library <laughs> like if you have the I have I have a Dao de Pu Dao of Pu the Dao the the Dao de Pu yeah so like you know like the Dao de Ching but the Dao de Pu um, I have that and that's definitely way higher vocabulary than uh, than you know way or higher <laughs> way or higher. <laughs> You like my that on phonics thing is just so stupid. I mean, oh. so look, there's there's a lot of subliminal things in that, which is really interesting. It's like the the frustration that she feels 
of like trying to read to her kids in the tra traditional way. And they're like just running around shooting her. She's not actually like teaching them to read clearly. Right. Well, um, let me, let me play this real quick. I don't, I can't find the text easily, but I'll just play this audio book so you can hear the text. Uh, Chapter see. seven of Winnie the Pooh by A. A. Milne. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Okay. Chapter seven, in which Kanga and Baby Roo come to the forest, and Piglet has a bath. Nobody seemed to know where they came from, but there they were in the forest, Kanga and Baby Roo. When Pooh asked Christopher Robin. How did they come here? Christopher Robin said, In the usual way, if you know what I mean, Pooh. And Pooh, who didn't, said, Oh. Then he nodded his head twice and said, In the usual way. Ah. Oh. Okay, so the book we have, it's like paragraphs of text with like a little small illustration kind of embedded somewhere here and there. It's not like ten words on a page, a picture, like a normal kid's book. Okay, yeah. so it's not a book that you would normally give to a four-year-old. Right. Okay, and you can hear from the vocabulary level, it's not just like a, who said this? It's like, you know, it's it's like literary in a way, right? Yeah. So I'm just giving that context because like when I'm, I'll, I'll like the past week or so, I read that every night with Seneca while she's falling asleep at her bedtime. So I'm laying with her, reading that book to her, and we'll pick a story and then we'll read it together. Or I'll read it to her rather. And usually by that point i'm very tired and so i'm like half falling asleep a lot of times and like you know when you're like kind of just half asleep you might not read a word it's like you're just filling in blanks sometimes or whatever like it'll just happen every once in a while because I'm, yeah. I'm tired right and i'll be like you know who asked or something like that and she'll be like said because it but and it won't you know it'll it'll happen every once in a while not that often but you know at least once a night because i'm so tired right and uh, and the point I'm making is I'll be reading, okay? And then let's say I slip up on a word or I skip a word or I fill in a word or something like that. Every single time she goes, she'll correct me like right away. And, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because like the speed at which that guy was reading, that's probably about the speed, maybe a little bit faster that I, I probably read a little bit faster out loud, maybe not quite as, I mean, but around that same level of, of speed, she's correcting me at that speed. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we're reading the book, it's all this text. I say the wrong word, mix it up, or whatever, or, or add a word. She corrects me in real time. So she's reading with me. How does she know where I'm at? Yeah. Because it, again, it's not one of those picture books where it's like you got the 10 words, they just memorize the word. It's it's the paragraphs of information, you know? Yeah, yeah Right. Yeah. So I'm just showing that for everybody of like, compared to the hooked on phonics or any other fucking thing where it's like, do you see how old that kid was? Yeah. And it's like, the dog jumped on the ball. And I'm like, my four-year-old is like reading Winnie the Pooh, the original text with me in real time, correcting me if I make a mistake. Right. You know, and... um. I sent you a text last night, right, Drake, of Max sitting there with that Neil Stevenson book, like reading the back. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I ended up going, hey, you know, Max, I have this collection of Ray Bradbury short stories. It's like a thick, it's like 900 page book. And I was like, I used to love these books when I was like 13, 14, whatever, like I read Ray Bradbury. Right. And I was like, you might be interested in that. So when we went to bed, so I'm reading with Seneca, Max is in there and he already read like four of the short stories. <laughs> And I asked him about it, like, which one did you read? Or how was the story that you read? He goes, which one? <laughs> right? He's like, I read several of them. He's telling me about the story or whatever, each one of them, right? He's six yeah. and a half reading Ray Bradbury short stories. That's hilarious. Right? Um, what was the other thing I was going to share? Was there something else? Oh, it's just the Noah Yuval thing. Oh, no, no. I was going to share some pictures real quick. Check this out. Okay. So right. did you guys see I, this already? Off, but keep going. Huh? I got to go. Okay, go ahead. I got to go close somebody more. <laughs> see ya see ya mitch um we won't have to spend too much time but i want to share this because i know not everyone has seen this and not especially on the podcast ah dude yes i'll play this so this is the this is my six-year-old max right sitting with katie they're they're sewing something they're making some kind of toy or costume or something some sort of a banana okay max and i are hanging out making some stuffed toys of the kids design 
I want to make a vampire toy. As you see, I don't have the design. You're mapping out the design? Okay. Now, by the way, do you know how he knows about vampires? Yeah, I was going to ask. Because we watched some Ted Ed video that was about like prime numbers and stuff. And in that's it, one right. of the characters was a vampire, right? So that's why if you look at the V, that's how they had done the vampire. Because it was like you had numbers and then you had one that was a V, right? Okay. You see how there's this diagram he's got going on here? Like he's got all the parts mapped out. He drew that. <laughs> I love we it. were sitting here. We were doing some math problems. And I thought we could do it on a video. Now, I just asked you, you only one. need one math question. I know. And I'm going to ask you that same math question and then I'll ask you a different one. How about that? Okay, I asked you 526 times 2. And that is 1052. Right. Now, it took you a little longer when you were doing it yourself. Yeah, but now I know the answer. You do know the answer now. So no. I'm going to ask you another question and see if you can do it uh, on the fly. Okay, and then what, that way people can see the difference between when you already knew the answer and when you're working on it. How about that? Okay. Um, 435 times two. 435? Mm -hmm. And I'll keep going from the cutting. So 35 is times two. No, 400 times two is 800. That means we'll be in the 800s. 435. <laughs> I'm just watching. Uh, 870. Whoa. That was really good. Okay, can I give you another one? Yes. Okay, what is 12 times 3? 12 times 3. 12 times 3. 12 times 3. What is it? 12 times 3. Katie, hmm. you gave me a too easy question there. What was the answer? 36. Nice. All right. Ha, guys, you know what I have? I have this pattern. Mm -hmm. You know what it goes like? It goes, Tell us about it. It goes 12, 24, 36. So you know those multiples 48, of 12? 48, and then 60. And hey. it was 60. So you got some multiples of 12 already figured out? Okay, all right, all right, a hard one, a hard one, a hard one. Hard one! Okay, a hard one. Okay. 1,154 <laughs> times 2. 1,154 times 2. Okay, that's way too hard. Try it. I don't even remember what it said. I, I'll, I'll, I know because we got the video on, so it's distracting. But if we didn't have the pretend the video is not on, 1,154 times 2. 1,154. So that's 2,200. No, no, it's not. It's 2,000. Three hundred and eight. Whoa! Two thousand three hundred and. What'd you say? You said it earlier. Eight. There you go. Nice. Okay. So wait, how old are you again? Five, six. Actually. You're six. <laughs> are you gonna be seven later this year? Yeah, in October. Cool. Okay. You want another one or do you want me to stop? Okay, so just to show like our our approach with educating the kids is not just about get them to perform as if they can read. Yeah. It is to develop their ability to process information and see patterns and handle problems they haven't exactly heard be like and what's what I think would be difficult for people to grasp is the fact that we're not homeschooling him. Like he's not in school, but what I'm saying is we're not like today is we're going to do our math lesson for today. Like right. that right there is the most that he will do math. I'm not saying like he would refuse to. I'm just saying it's the most that like our, our math lessons are like having a conversation about it over dinner or, you know, like, and, and also like any videos we give them, whether it's a math type, like 
teaching you something or just a video using math, like he's absorbing all of that. The, vo the, the perception of the words, the sounds, the letters, the numbers, everything is automated. Like Jordan Peterson was saying in that video, it's automated. Yeah. So he can attend to the information far more effectively than the child who's doesn't even have that part automated and then is trying to work with the information and is just like, what the fuck is this? So that the hooked on phonics thing, as an example, doesn't solve that problem. It's sort of taking advantage of, because if you tried to give that hooked on phonics thing to an adult, it won't work. Right. The only reason it seems to work is because the child's still relatively in a natural learning ability state and it only will work to a very limited degree. Yeah. You know, and notice they didn't present the woman who was the girl from that thing as I'm really fucking stable. I'm no. doing all that. It's like, they made it seem like she's not even married. Right. And right. she's like super emotionally unstable. Is she the product of this thing? Right. Right. It does, it's like this weird, but that's, but Hey, I'll give them a thumbs up for their marketing approach. Right. Yeah, for sure. There's, there's a lot right. of subliminal points. Plus they make it so thing. easy. It's like, it's only a dollar. We'll send you a test kit. It's like, right. If you actually believed in it, you'd have people go one-on-one -on -one and convince them and pay $50,000 for it. Cause it really fucking works if it actually works. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, that was an interesting point. I wanted to share one more little quick thing along the lines of Max. This is just something he made the other day, right? Oh, Here's the his, math book. yes. the math books, right? So this is, all of this is self-generated. This is, none of this is like, okay, today you need to make a book about something or you need to do this. This is all, it's, it's coming from within. It's like, uh, and, you would and, see hang it, on, hang on, pause right there. Pause right okay. there. Cause you just said that all of this is self-generated. You're not going and saying, okay, now today you're going to go make a book on math. That is the equivalent of trying to give somebody a purpose versus knowing your purpose. Right. It's like you're, you're like, giving yourself a purpose because you have the vocabulary within you to see something that you want to do. Right. right. Versus someone's trying to force it on you, which is like the school approach. It's trying to force you to learn math, force you to learn science, just get you to do it. Whereas our kids are like, hey, can we get some more? Like, um, I, I didn't take any video, pictures of it or anything, but Max made this little he took this piece of paper and folded it up into like a rectangle and he mm -hmm. drew like a picture of Winnie the Pooh on it. And it was a phone that had Winnie the Pooh on it. Okay. And if you unfolded the phone in all the folds were these little strips of paper that had these like lines, these like little diagrams on them. Okay. And he was showing me like, these are the, these are the microchips that are in your, in your phone. <sighs> there's four, there's four different microchips. And he was talking to me about it. That's cool. That was like the toy that he made was a piece of paper folded up with microchip. You know what I mean? As a way of yeah, showing yeah, yeah. me how a phone works. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, That's cool. Let me go back. Oh, let me share. But yeah, I just wanted to make that point of just like um, that is self-generated where, where most parents are trying to give their kids something to do. Okay, here's your project. Here's what you're going to do. And this is going to give you this understanding of whatever. And like, yeah, those projects are cool. They're fun or whatever. But it's like this is actually self-generated from within the child themselves of, of going, I, I want to create something. I want to create something. Here's what I'm making. And within that, you're seeing what their capabilities are. And it, it's, it's coming from them. It's the same thing like you're looking at Instagram and you're going, oh, I, I want to try on this influencer. I want to try on that. I want to do, I want to be this person. I want to be that. Maybe this is my purpose for, for life. But it's like, you need to know what it is. And that's informed by you building your vocabulary and then like, going and studying things on your own, like destiny, going and studying this and going, oh, oh no, it, 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 the purpose becomes clear. And then you can give yourself purpose within that of like, I'm gonna go fucking do this. This, this is worth it. This makes sense. This, this is what I want to do. That's what I wanna share. And th that's, this is also why our focus is, is, yes, we're talking about how we see things work, et cetera, but you, there's only so much purpose you can give to another person. They have to see it. So that's yeah. why our focus is on get them the tools so they can actually change their ability to understand and process things. That is the key point. That's what we mean by re-education. It's not primarily get them to change their belief to a different belief. It's no change how the information is structured in you that is causing you to process what you see in a certain way incorrectly. Yes. 
Yes. Um, because I, yeah. I remember like when you first were telling me about like creating a world that's best for all. And I was just like, yeah, but nobody else is going to do that. And I'm not, I don't want to do that. Like, well, you know, it's cool that John Rebecca guy, he was talking about, we, you know, it, the idea of spirituality is enlightenment for everybody. That's where it should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And the way that he was talking about enlightenment for everybody, he was like, he was like but, but that's not, not everybody just meditates, everyone, which is exactly what we're saying. It's like, no, right. first of all, it's everyone has their basic needs. Like if we were spiritually aware at all, we would be like, why is anyone suffering unnecessarily? And even if it is necessary, can we solve that problem of it being necessary? Right. Like that's step one. And within that, like, think about it. Imagine you're a Buddhist and you're like, I'm going to go sit and meditate and try to stop my mind from thinking so that I can reach enlightenment. And then like they do this work, like they, I don't know what they do. Like they fucking sweep a floor for yeah. hours and hours until they achieve enlightenment or something. It's like, you can literally just make your process of enlightenment, changing the fucking system to make sure right. everybody has what they need and just be Zen in that, <laughs> you know, like, what the right. Fuck? Like, I, I remember- but then you can't escape. You can't go and escape. Right. And it's not right. just about you and your experience of enlightenment. Enlightenment is not an experience only. It's like the actual ex- enlightenment experience. It's like, you know, even that I was listening to that conversation with Jordan Peterson, John Rebecca, it was like this point of that, that state of achieving, you know, that, that state of consciousness where you're like one with everything. Right. But if you're having that cosmic connection experience with oneness with everything, and there's a child being raped a thousand miles away, are you actually one with everything? Yeah. Or are you just having an emotional experience within yourself that's symbolic only and has no real actual value to anything outside of yourself? It's not real, but yet you could still have that experience. If you sorted out everything in reality, it would be your constant fucking state of experience because yeah. just being here, like in fucking like real time reality, would be like pleasant. Yeah. Because the conditions would be like there would be no anxiety, no fear of the, your creation, which is this world coming to get you at some point. I, I think the part of the uh, like why people go out to uh, you know find themselves or they're sweeping a floor for hours and hours on end until they reach this point of like their mind is still or whatever is because yes, you can do that while you're doing your process. And that should be the way that you do it. I mean, just, if you look at it logically, it just makes the most sense. Um, But people doubt themselves in that they don't have that um, control over their own. They don't have the discipline, really. They don't have the discipline to just go and make their process because what they're going to do, they know people know inherently within themselves, what they're going to do is, ah, things are getting uncomfortable. I need to suppress this, this discomfort and then just take this external stimuli. And then, and then they stop, they stop their whole process. And so they're, they're trying to put themselves in a condition or in an environment where they're like, well, now I can't do that. So now I have to sleep, sweep this floor and, and, and then I'll reach Nirvana, but okay. So you do that in those conditions, but then you're going to have to come back to the real world at some point. Because they think Nirvana is somewhere else, actually. They think it's a state of mind, which is some heaven existence separate from the physical toil that you have to experience. And it's like, even if, like, th- there is no separation. So you can't go somewhere else that's separate physically from this physical world. Even if you're in some heaven dimension, it's still part of this. It's still connected. It's still going to have an effect on it. That's the whole as above, so below. You can't fucking escape it. Why not realize like the actual, and this is this point, like if you look at the whole meaning crisis, the identity crisis, the search for purpose, the only way you can be searching for purpose if you're not here looking at reality for what it is and and being honest about it and then realizing, oh, the only way for this to be great is if it's best for everybody. And that would be my purpose now. Yeah. What will your purpose be then after that? Well, I don't know. Let's get there. Yeah. But but why does why does who you are have to be determined by your purpose? The only reason why it seems like you need a purpose is because you're in a world that's fucking against you. Mm. That doesn't support you just to be here. A tree does not have anxiety about not having purpose. It's fulfilling its purpose by existing. Yes. Why aren't we realizing what is our purpose that we fulfill by existing because the existing that we're doing is counterintuitive or counterproductive to our existence. Yes. So 
purpose as a as a thing you're looking for only exists in the context of um the conditions not being met for you to just to be here without any purpose oh, man. And, and then anything you do would become purposeful if that makes sense yeah because think about it think about it from the perspective of like if you were just out living in nature and i'm not suggesting oh like oh abandon everything you're doing and go live in nature but if you were just out if that just was the way things were you're out living in nature where would this question of like what is my purpose come in yeah it, it wouldn't you'd, you'd be like you'd be surviving you'd be um you know chopping down a tree or like hunting yeah. or you know collecting food or whatever you'd be See, existing part of, the, just like part of the fear though is that you need some survival pressure sure then so that's the sure. problem with your argument oh okay i see what you're saying i see what it's like saying. okay yeah. so that's why we need to serve no like we have the means now to transcend that point of survival so yeah well but what would my purpose be then right you have an anxiety about what would my purpose be but yeah. you also have an anxiety of just what is your purpose now yeah so even with all the fucking greatest survival pressure like we're at the edge of extinction because of technology, AI, all this crazy stuff going on, we still can't even be settled with, well, our purpose is just to survive in all of this. Right. It's right, clearly right. not the, the, the purpose question is coming up because we have never really transcended the point of like, why are we separate from physical reality and just trying to survive? Yeah. Um, okay, I want to switch gears for a second. Go ahead. Go back. Just so until I so I don't forget. Okay. So here's something else. I just found this randomly. All right, this is a video that Max was watching. Seneca then sat down and started watching with him. You can see her elbow there. Mm. Allows for a much larger. There are also some other extensions to Roman numerals. The most popular being Vincum. Vincum allows for much larger numbers than standard Roman numerals. For example, the only way to write 10,000 in standard Roman numerals would be M, 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 M. But this is obviously not very ideal as it's very long and quite confusing. Okay, so. That's what my kids, are, that's like their entertainment. Yeah. That's their Sesame Street. That's their, I mean, it's just one random of like the hundreds of videos that we have that are of all kinds of different topics. They'll be watching a video, like taking apart, you know, 3D schematic diagram of like an airplane cockpit and like describing all the different parts and everything. Right. So yeah, that's cool. it's like when I'm saying these, these things are self-generated, I'm not saying like my kids are just coming up with all kinds of random things within themselves. It's not, it's only within them because the, that vocabulary is being given to them. But he, right. they can sit and focus on that video because all of those words are within them very yeah. specifically, right? Yeah. Okay, so here's the other thing I was going to share. The math book, right? Yeah. So this is this little thing Max made. He makes stuff like this all the time. Hold on. Oops. Right? Okay. What the hell? Hmm? There we go. That's the, that's the last page. Let me go scroll down. I don't know which page is number. Oh, here's page one. Yeah. Here is a multiplication chart. And here is a addition chart. Hmm. Here is a minus chart. Math time. <laughs> and then the, these ones here, Katie wrote, because he like gave it to Katie as like something for her to solve. Right? Oh, that's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> book two. I got, I got, book one, book two. I'll yeah. show you, what is it? A, a negative? A negative, oh, negative number line. Yeah. Okay. For instance, two plus negative one equals one. And so he's like giving examples. Which is uh, when I saw this, Math I was time. like, holy shit, I've got adults. I've, I've got children who are 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 who cannot do negative numbers. Like, oh, they, yeah. they would, no, like, totally. Adding yeah, and subtracting I, negative numbers is just like, nope. Like, what's happen. like one minus negative two? They'd probably be like, uh, they would be stuck. They'd be stuck. Three, like, is it negative one? A decimal number is like, for an example, 2.5361. <laughs> and one half equals 0. 0.5. Math time. Look, and then he just problems to like practice yeah. it. Book four, a shape has a number of sides. So this and this have something in common. Math time. And then look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> math time i like this notes <laughs> please right yeah. and then check out check out this oh nice this is all him his handwriting yeah he's figuring out how to write 132 look he's breaking it down one three two so he yeah. understands uh what is the word like uh 
the the digits like the place yeah you know he understands one is 100 three that's 30 two yeah you see yeah um and then he was showing me if you wanted 999 you could do it this way uh -huh. up up here yeah 999 or he's like you could do this because it's a thousand minus one yeah yeah, yeah. that's right? awesome yeah. And then this is just this little random thing I found, <laughs> which I asked him about it. Cause, and if you look, if you count, he's got seven here, mm. six here, five, four, three, two, one. Mm. And then he even wrote those numbers on there. Right? And actually he wrote them in reverse and he was telling me like, isn't it interesting how seven has one, but one has seven. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was asking him like, what is this here? Uh -huh. And he said, this is where the bees are leaving the hive to go get, the nectar from the flower. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, well, what is this over here? He goes, that's a queen cell. Oh, okay. Like they'll develop these queen cells on a hive so that yeah. if they want to swarm, they'll have these queens that are there. And I'm like, so you, like, there's a lot more to this little random picture than it is obvious, like knowledge, understanding that he has, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just wanting to show people like so much context because it's like, when you look at something like the hook on phonics, it's just very limited to the context of getting you to a phonics level of sounding out words. Yeah. You see which, what I mean? Which we it's already not know a comprehensive. From, we already know from beginning to read, it's, that's not reading. So that's not actually reading. It's like, it's a coping mechanism towards reading, but it's, it's still a coping mechanism. That's like, it's not the actual thing that you want to have happen. That's like, it's like dry. It's like um, riding a bike with, uh training wheels it's like okay i mean you're on your way but you're not fucking riding a bike it's it's very different the problem very is different. the the phonics approach doesn't it's like you will have like let's say jordan peterson right he obviously knows how to read a lot of stuff and he might have learned with phonics mm -hmm. so then the assumption is that we'll see what phonics can produce right but for the average person that's not what it produces it does not produce a jordan peterson level ability of processing information reading things even phonics. Then you say like, oh, but all these people back in the day, they were taught with phonics. Okay. But then they also developed systems that didn't work anymore and allowed this to happen and allowed children to suddenly switch to a method. Of, so it obviously if it produced some result, it was somewhat limited in its, in its, in its, what it produced. Cause it, it led to at least a generation of people who didn't give a fuck about actually continuing that with children. Right. So it didn't produce real ability. Right. It's like, there's, there's two thirds of kids right now who cannot read in the US, who can't read at the level that they're supposed to be reading at. It's like- And even so, the level they're supposed to be reading at is, is very like, low. it's like, uh, what's the level that you want your slaves to understand freedom? Oh, oh no, no, no. No, no, but, but play with me for a month. Yeah, like yeah. what What would be the level you'd want them to understand? Freedom would be like, oh yeah, on Saturday nights, they're allowed to have a little dance party, you know, if they've right. done all their work. Do you want them to think about freedom from the perspective of owning a fucking plantation and running it and all of that? You don't want them. So like children aren't reading at the level they're supposed to read. That's like saying, dude, even now our slaves don't even understand freedom at the level we want them to understand that. So now they're getting really restless. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like they're not even going to the dance party and understanding, no, no, that's, you know, it's a stupid analogy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the level of reading to which children are not even reading is like the dumb level. They're not even reading at that level anymore. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you, you gave that clarification. So basically, all right, we're at this stage now, but, but I, I was bringing that up just because you could say, yeah, some kids go through school and they learn, they learn how to read. It's like, but the vast majority of them aren't even going to do that. Yeah, actually look at the statistics. Actually look at the measurement of it. That's just an assumption people have because their reading ability gets them by to a certain degree. But yeah. they're not able to read because if they could read, and I'm not trying to be silly with the words, it's just like they can't read the fucking situation that's happening in our world. Yeah. They can't process that. That's reading. Seeing what's happening and making the connection of what's going to happen next, that's a part of reading. That's the purpose of it is yeah. to see how do I take the information in front of me and do something with it that actually matters? And now, again, if you're if you're an adult and you're sending your kid to college this year or next year, what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, problem is you prepared for that moment. Yeah. Started preparing 15 years for ago. 15, 12, whatever years ago. Right. So, so I'm not talking to the parent 
then I'm talking to them now and it's like, they're already, it's like, well, I mean, even if they were like, well, I need to do something radically different. What would they do with this child that they've dumbed down to the point where college is the only thing that they yeah. could do because it's just a continuation of, and then they're going to go get a job, but that job's not going to be there. Right. They, I mean, they, look, no. automated the process to this point. I was just like, okay, well now, what? but it's interesting. I, you know, I talked to a lot of parents and I asked them, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how important is, you know, university to them. And a lot of parents today are like, yeah, I don't really care too much. Don't not, that's not, that's not where my focus is right now. And I'm like, okay, great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you can see people are starting to see it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a mix. There's definitely a mix. Some people it's like super important. Some people is like, no, not at all. But um, regardless, the fact is right now, there are parents sending their kids to school. Yes. Whether they thought it was important or not. Yes. They're doing is, you know, at least it's, I, I don't know. I haven't looked into this, the, the research of if it's declined or not, you know, university attendance or not, even if it's declined, are there still not probably a million kids going to university next year? I mean, I don't know how many, what's the number of, see, I'm curious what the actual number is. How many um, new university students each year? Let's see what it is. You know. I would bet a million is pretty close. I would bet that. Is it? Total enrollment. I want how many new? It says total enrollment in undergraduate in 2021 is 20 million. 20 million? Yeah, way more than I would have thought. Wow. Okay. That's not new college students. Okay. okay, Um, okay. I'm trying to find where's the actual new. Everything I'm seeing is like, current just enrollment I mean, I'm not really looking that hard but um anyways still 20 million people in college right now well chat gpt is like you know like going nuts yeah. and, and you know but john vervicki made that point about punctuated equilibrium in the sense of like we could see this growth and this acceleration and then it could plateau for a bit but even where it's at right now there might be a plateau because it's like, okay, we got to a certain level and I don't think it's at that level yet, but maybe it is, I don't know. But then now what's done with it? Now it's going to be populating apps, doing all this stuff. And then there will be things that come from that. So the AI may not continue to advance infinitely. It may stall for a moment, but then all the stuff that comes from it will be used in new ways to, it was like, oh, it, it's like, I see people make that argument where they're like, well, but you know, people have been saying things like since the printing press, it's going to replace jobs and all this stuff, but new jobs are created. And it's like, yeah, but printing presses don't create more printing presses that are better than the previous printing presses. Like the AI can fucking create new shit. Yeah. And it can, (laughs) it's like, and the thing is you can, you can't, program a printing press to do everything like you could program an ai that goes and gives instructions to other ais i mean it's like how do you not see that it's like so, uh, i think no yuval harari one of these people was like the you know it's not like nuclear bombs because nuclear bombs don't make more nuclear bombs <laughs> right right right, right. You know? yeah someone was saying that there well the person i was talking to uh, was was saying like well you know there'll be new jobs and like Okay, what? What new jobs? And he, what he said was like, um, like you know, uh, therapy. Will, will you know? I see a lot of therapy cropping up of just people connecting with other people online and, and things like that. And, and so there's new social jobs like that, or, or new like personal uh, girlfriend or whatever. And like you know, as uh, some people getting paid for that. I'm like, yeah, you don't know AI can already do that. Like they, they, they've already created AI that can measure your emotional responses and just see, hey, are these emotional responses even, um, are, are you saying what is in congruence with who you're, what, what your body is saying, right? It, the it's problem a, is the, the therapist person. Yeah. What happens when they have the identity crisis? What happens when they need the therapist? I mean, right, I'm right, right. Is yeah. you're, like you're assuming that there's a class of people who are just stable and there's all the people who need therapy. Right. When the reality is every, the way everything is moving is that even the therapists are unstable. Mm-hmm. I mean, take Jordan Peterson, for example, he had a fucking mental breakdown and was on like all these medications and shit. 
Yeah. Oh, you know, and it's like, it? so how come his ability to be a psychologist didn't prevent that? And, it, and he was in a position, celebrity wise, et cetera, where he could come out of that and still have a lot of support. The average yes. person is not in that position. The average yes. therapist is not in that position. If yes. the average therapist has that mental breakdown and then you find out, oh, my therapist literally just fucking had a mental breakdown. Are you going to go back to that therapist? Yeah. That therapist doesn't have the, 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 I mean, Jordan Peterson's a celebrity at this point. Even when he went through that, because I actually went and saw him live before he had that issue. And I, then I I'm like, well, he, and I'm like, I mean, I'm like, wow, how is he going to recover from that? From the perspective of when people just question everything and like, you know, he stood back up and is going further and stuff and kind of went back a little bit to God a little bit, you know, and, and I, and I, based on that point with John Verbecki that I was showing, what I wanted to show was none of the fucking answers are in religion. Right. It's what's, and he's saying, but what else has been able to move people in a way to move things to the next level? It's always been religion, but that's we, what we're here to do. And it's not we, about creating beliefs. It's just about yeah. utilizing that, that point of like, okay, but what do things really mean? What is the purpose really? What were you going to say? I was just going to say, we have that with destiny. It's not about religion. It's about the understanding of who are we? Like it's actually, the philosophy, it's yes. the cog sci, it's all the stuff that that guy was saying. Yes, yes. And, and it's so cool because just, just going through the destiny light process, you start to see all that where you're just like, and, and that's like just a very surface level scratch of the scratch of the surface where you just start going into, oh, fuck, there is more to my mind. And you know, I, even I, that person saying to you, well, there'll be new jobs like therapists. Oh, people need to be their own therapist. Yes. Yeah. Like, Obviously. like, like, remember that video we talked about that was talking about the slave master complex and all that. And the guy saying right. like the good therapist gets the person to realize they don't need the therapist. It's like right. they need to change the point for themselves. Right. So right. let's just cut the chase, get rid of the therapist right away <laughs> and give the person the fucking tools to process the information and then the understanding to understand what's going on and solve the problem for themselves. Because at the end of the day, isn't that what the therapist was trying to get the person to? Yes. So they didn't really do anything that whole time. Yeah. They didn't really help the person at all, except to delay that process when right. it's available. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Um, I know we've, we've got another call in like 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what else is there to say anyways? Uh, Self-perfected event coming up less than two weeks. Less than two weeks in like, yeah, basically in 12 days, something like that. I don't know if there's any last minute tickets, but if there are, I mean, hit if up you want to go, you should hit up Mitch. For sure. For sure. And um, yeah, I mean, hey, if you're listening to this and you're not a distributor yet, Oh, what are you waiting for? Seriously. <laughs> and uh, if you are a distributor and you're listening to this, uh, also, what are you waiting for? Go out and share this. Like, yeah. share what you understand. Not this podcast. This. Not the podcast. Yeah. No. Share your Don't understanding. Share yeah. <laughs> people aren't going to understand this, but share your understanding so that you can support other people. So, because people really fucking need this right now. They need this right now. They are literally. Uh, it's not even like a. It's not even just a, this is what people are needing, like they want it. It's like, also, it's needed. It's, it's needed. They're, they're like, imagine, imagine you have like crisis. cancer and you're sick and you, what do you need? You need like the cure, right? Yeah. But the person doesn't even know <laughs> they're sick. Like some do, some yeah. don't, but yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's got it. Everybody yeah. has this problem. Yeah. That's, that's like, I'll, I'll tell you this, this short story and we'll wrap it here. Like, um, that's like, uh, Christine is a holistic nutritionist or she, she studied to be a holistic nutritionist uh, and she practiced that for a while. Um, but the whole reason why she got into that was because as a child, she was so unhealthy. Like her body was just like all over the place. And uh, she was like, there's something wrong. But they didn't know something was wrong beforehand. They were just eating their, their food, whatever, that was unhealthy. They, there's so many people like that today that are just like eating whatever they're eating and their body is doing like, and they think it's normal. It's like, Oh yeah. You know, like some, some people, they just get bloated all the time. That was me. I was just getting fucking bloated. Right. And like, <laughs> then I started drinking this raw milk shit <laughs> and that completely changed. Right. But it's like, I'm not saying raw milk is the answer. What I'm saying is there are people out there that don't know they're sick. They think it's normal to be sick. Most people think it's normal to be sick. 
Some people are, are realizing, hey, my body is sick. Hey, this society is sick. Hey, that's the I, whole trans thing is like they're realizing that. But the only logical answer is, oh, essentially, I need to fucking separate myself completely from my body and go str- all the way into my consciousness. Yes, because that is the next step. When the AI starts to become very persuasive, it will at some level, some of it will start persuading people that that becoming transcending being human. We're saying yes, transcend be, being human by realizing you who you are as life. Yes, the computer is going to tell you transcend being human by realizing you who you are as a fucking machine, or as because the mind. That's, but that's what it is. That's what yeah. the mind is—a machine. It's just going to tell. It's going to give you the answer that it's about being a machine, which is literally denying what you actually are completely. Right, and, and yet you, you feel you feel more connected. You feel like uh, well, it's but we can already. Because of all these problems, like people are going online, they're not getting that connection that they need. Right. Even though that the AI, we didn't play this clip from No You All, but he talks about how they're, it's shifting from it's mastered attention. Now it's focused on mastering intimacy and developing intimate relationships. So AI can be used to persuade you. You'll be talking to an AI and you won't realize that it's just a fucking tool of the Chinese government or the yeah. US government or some company trying to become friends with you. So you'll buy their products. Yeah. Like imagine when you're like talking to this AI and then it's like, it's got these really cool shoes and it's like, you don't even know that's what, what the purpose of it was. Just like right. my whole point with the hundred gex was like all these people who might get into that music be like, Oh yeah, cool. And they get emotionally involved with it and it speaks to them. And then like, Oh, Oh, that person's trans. Like, you know, I never considered that before. And, but they related to it somehow. And so then they start to look at that as an option. And, yeah. I, and it's funny because from what I can see, that's not the purpose of that group. Right. Yeah. It's not like the drag queen story where they're trying to brainwash your kids. It's just the kids now who've already accepted it producing art, which is going to influence other people to be like, hey, I, I, I want to adopt the. It's like if you're a Lady Gaga fan, you want to dress like her, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you're going <laughs> to yeah. adopt things about that person. And so it's just like the solution is not to fight that, it's to look at, okay, what is causing this in the first place, actually? Because yeah. it's not. Well, you just don't know Jesus. Right. right. Jesus was the first trans person. Trans human. Exactly. Literally the first trans fucking human. <laughs> so that's not a good thing, guys. Because imagine right. when AI comes online and it's like, dude, I know way more. I can talk to you more intimately and know you more intimately than God does. Yeah. You know, like imagine when the when the real I'm really seeing that possibility of the AI religion. Oh, for sure. Like it won't even necessarily be seeming as a religion. It'll be something that people just really connect with. It's so obvious. They won't actually get the real thing that they want out of it any more than anyone got what they really needed out of religion. Right. But it'll be the thing. So we have the alternative to that. It's the only alternative because it's connecting to everything as it really physically is. And then solving the problems that are, that we've accepted and allowed. And you got to, you get to be here in real physical life versus in some metaverse or just in your mind or just in a place that doesn't actually exist, but, or can only exist because the physical exists. It's like, it's, it's not about going back. It's about actually being here. That's it. Just being here, you know, and, and, and being able to be here and not in your mind and not with all these thoughts and not bored and all this shit. It's just like being here and like, Oh, wow, this is actual connectedness it's time to share this with other people come on let's go bunch of clubhouses we'll see you on friday yeah what's sunday all the things all right yes we'll see you bye bye